meeting back to order. Uh, next item will be uh, general public comments. Three minutes and your name, where you're from, and please keep the conversation cordial <coughs> and to a subject. My name is Jim Riekel. I live on Maureen Street in Scarborough. <clears throat> and this is about dogs. I've entitled these comments, One Bird. After months of dialogue, as you all know, it's difficult to present new facts. Until those facts are recognized, however, they bear <laughs> repeating. I wish I could stand here and praise the process <coughs> from which the pro proposed animal control ordinance has emerged. It's impossible to do that for the following reasons. <coughs> First, the, un the ordinance is unnecessary given that there has been only a single take of a plover by a dog in over 30 years, one bird. As a footnote to that in fact, given the trivial consequence of dogs on plover welfare and the overly restrictive nature of the proposed rules, it can only be concluded that the unstated intent is to minimize dog activity and presence on the beaches <coughs> using the plover hoax as cover. Secondly, the proposed rules are unnecessary because the effectiveness of existing ordinances is unknown given the absence of enforcement. Third, the rules <coughs> proposed are complex and complex enough that it renders them truly unenforceable, therefore in ineffective from the onset. Uh, finally, fourth, a divisive issue must be settled by compromise, a feature conspicuously missing <coughs> in the proposal. I ask you to consider two questions. First, there have been two highway fatalities in Scarborough in the last three years. With a little poetic license, if we extrapolate <coughs> that rate over the past 30 years, there would have been 20 highway deaths, I repeat, 20 highway deaths over 30 years. How does that compare to one bird over the same time period? Second, how would you judge a body of officials that enacts a punitive and unnecessary legislation after its very defeat in a popular vote? I refer, of course, to the December 3rd referendum. <clears throat> I would like to believe that you, council members, will carefully consider your action in this matter and address the real issues in an honest and transparent way. Thank you. Um, Judy Roy, 2nd Avenue. My comments are ra over uh, the whole process relative to the dogs on the beach and the ordinance. As I've watched the process to make changes to the ordinances regulating beach usage and the protection of the piping plover, I've been concerned about several things. It's been an effort to determine what changes the council had to make to answer the demands of the IF&W and at the same time satisfy dog owners wanting to be able to walk their dogs unleashed, dog owners who want to walk their dogs leashed, and residents who want to be able to walk the beach without concern about being approached and potentially injured by dogs running off lease, and of course protect the plovers. First, I'm concerned that some of the residents who have been actively involved lack an understanding of the process incumbent in a town council, town manager form of government. Would we have a selectman form of gover government, it would mean how many people could I bring to the warrant meeting and how late they could stay up, whether or not something passed. A council member is always placed on an ad hoc committee that is established and no councillor needs to recruit themselves from any voting on final orders placed before the council just because they live in an area affected by the change. Councillors are elected at large and unless they will receive financial favor due to their vote, they do not and should not recuse themselves for the, from the vote. A well-organized minority group fronted a campaign to overturn the decision by the council to require that dogs be leashed townwide year-round. This referendum resulted in drawing out approximately 4,400 voters, 2,400 who voted to overturn, myself included, and 1,050 voted to leave uh, the amendment uh, the way it was. Um, there are, however, 10,000 other registered voters that the council must consider as you, as you decide on changes to the ordinance because the council does represent all residents. The council has honored the results 
and the ad hoc committee was established. The committee provided a report, and now it's the council who need to examine each recommendation and come to consensus about which of these re re recommendations will address the demands of IF&W, the fiduciary status of all residents, the needs of all residents who use the beach, the piping plover, and the ability of the, of the town to effectively enforce. Not an easy task for sure. sure. Secondly, I've been astounded by how many times rude and disrespectful comments were made by some residents to the extreme of using bullying tactics. Also, some of the other antics that occurred, such as stalking members of the committee and taking photo photos of vehicles visiting their homes. These actions do not speak well for those involved, but only tended to fuel the controversy and feed animosity. Third, I've heard that there is a movement to petition to recall some council members. I cannot think that the reasons for this action has any legal, moral, or ethical basis. In the end, it will be the council decision as duly elected leg the legislative body of the town. The ordinance that is established will need the time test and perhaps some more tweaking, but it needs to be given a chance to succeed or fail whatever the final vote presents. Most assuredly, all the residents of the community need to be considered, and no dog is going to die if they cannot be off-leash at times, determined. I urge the council to remember that you serve all residents and that the vote on only overturned the amendment and the request of IF&W, and you honored that by establishing the ad hoc committee, and they did an admirable job. A number of recommendations will be voted upon tonight in first reading, and I hope this council will represent all voters as best possible and that the voters will be respectful. The true test will be how well the ordinance will be enforced, how well the signage is adjusted and displayed, and how well the residents of Scarborough and the visitors to our beaches are educated on beach uses. I elected this council to represent all rep re residents, not just well-organized special interest groups, because what you decide affects everybody. Nobody will get everything they want, but a good compromise needs to be established. Thank you. Next. Uh, Martin Tripp, Oceanwood. I don't care about the dogs. Uh, the $4 million increase in the school budget, I understand as well as everybody else in this auditorium, that that's a first shot and it's a ploy. That's just the way things get off. But I think that's outrageous to even think about that. But. As I mentioned last year, the Wentworth Debt Service, if you look at the Wentworth School as a vehicle, you're going to drive this vehicle off pretty soon, and the company, the bank, is going to present you with the bill on a monthly basis. This is, again, going to be $2 million a year, and that's going to be added directly to the taxes because the taxpayer is going to pay it. I don't know who else will. I bring that to your attention, the $600,000 that they're talking about haven't gotten back from the state in direct payments. I got a problem with that because it might be a one-off. It's here we go, it's an election year and we're going to give you that $600,000, but are we going to be saddled with that $600,000 after we spent it on a year-to-year -year basis? I got big concerns with that down to the Scarborough Land Trust. As far as I know and as far as I understand, they've spent about every dime they've got out of the Scarborough Land Trust bonding issue. Another vehicle, it's being driven off a lot and we're going to have to pay for the interest and for the principal on the Scarborough Land Trust. And I want the council to consider what the cost of that is rather than skipping over it and saying, well, you know, and it never comes up. But these are bills that are going to be paid I strongly suggest that we take a, let's use militant look at what we're spending, because I can't, I can't see how people can absorb this. Every time I read in the paper, Project Grace is asking for more money, money, and more people are going to the food bank. This must affect somebody in town. Not everybody's, you know, doing well. I suggest that. Uh, our finances should be strongly considered. And the dog issue, who cares? Thank you. My name is Mo Erickson, and I live at 288 Pine Point Road. And um, I'm not here for the dogs either. 
but I will say that I'm one of those people that he's talking about it's affecting. My husband, Paul, and I have both been lifelong residents here in Scarborough. My husband's a clam digger, and I work as a nurse at Maine Med. I think we're probably a pretty typical family here in Scarborough trying to survive in this town. Last year, I paid an uh, increase of $300 in my taxes. This past year, I had another $300 increase in my taxes, and I also had almost a $300 increase in my Scarborough sanitation bill. $600 this year alone. Well, for me, that's uh, a paycheck, and I think for most people that's a paycheck or even more of a week. Um, now I read about a possible 6.7% property tax increase for next year, another $300. Then I read about the need to hire four more cops, four more firemen, and a resource officer for Wentworth School third, fourth, and fifth grade. What would they be needing a resource officer for down there? But anyway, I don't want more cops. I don't want more firemen. I want more money. I want to keep my money. I want, and I, and I know that I'm not alone, because when I talk about with other, this with other people, they feel the same way I do. But I think no one, no one knows how to, to reach anybody. So th this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to complain. Um, then I find out that the council and the school board have decided to donate all of the furniture from Wentworth School to a third world country for a school there. Well, thank you, but I think I can decide where I want my charitable donation to go, not you guys. Um, I can tell you that I subbed down at Wentworth School and there is nothing wrong with that furniture down there. And how dare you, or whoever it is, it's like a mystery decision that was made. Give that furniture away and not use it for the new school. As I said, it's perfectly good. Um, I guess I feel like that's the attitude in this town is let's just buy new things for everybody, new police cars, new police SUVs, new public work trucks, employee cell phones, we have tree counter, and now possibly a piping plover officer. Great. I would love this town to devote as much time trying to cut your spending as you do on the dog versing piper plover issue. I think most people in this town are aware, are unaware of the spending going on, and more importantly of the attitude that, that we need to keep all of our town employees and administrators. We need to give them raises and increase their benefits without them having to increase their participation in that part. I, I know that um, I haven't gotten a raise in a, quite a while. My husband worked at Nissen's Bakery and was worked right out of a job. No raises there for seven years. And I know that I'm not alone, but it seems like the only people ever being able to get a raise are town people. Um, so I guess I'm asking you guys to please stop finding ways to spend our money. Stop hiring. Stop buying. Stop increasing the budget. Start doing what I've been doing in my family, and that's cut the budget. It's not fun, but you need to do that if you want to run a reasonable and responsible fiscal um, town. I know that... Um, Excuse me, ma'am, you have to wrap it up. Three minutes has passed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll just say that you're bleeding me dry and I know that I'm not alone. Thank you. Everyone try to keep it as close to three minutes as possible. There's a lot of people that would like to speak tonight. We have a half an hour. Good evening. My name is Dick Alofs. I live on Gunstock Road over in the Pleasant Hill area. Uh, quite frankly, I'm uh, surprised that we're having another session. I thought the 3,000 votes that uh, we already expressed had to solve the problem, but since it hasn't, let me throw my two cents in. Uh, I moved here 40 years ago from upstate New York and uh, looking for housing decided to settle in Scarborough specifically because I was had close access to Higgins Beach. Had three sons and a dog, 
and we were there all the time. Since the kids have grown, I've continued to walk the dog. I've gone through my fourth, fourth dog in those 40 years. The kids have married, settled in, and my grandkids are now using the beach. Um, I think uh, I think we've responded to this thing in total overkill. An idea that we uh, form a, a dog park, that we put all dogs on leashes everywhere in Scarborough is, is way too much. Let's get back to the real issue is we've got one dead bird and we've got the federal government that's concerned and let's see if we can solve that problem. Now I think very simply if we take a nice big sign write letters and say, warning, this is a restricted area, plan it down there on that far end, and then we hire a uh, dog policeman. And I suggest we get a senior citizen, give them 10 or 15 bucks an hour for those three hours in the morning, uh, give them a, uh, 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 a African helmet and a police, a dog police on his shirt, give them a... a a uh, yeah, big uh, horn to scare anybody off that comes nearby, and he would be tickled pink. And he could go and he could take his coffee and he could take his chair and he could see the sunrise every morning and spend his three hours and be paid. And we'll take a picture for the feds of the man and the sign that we're doing our part. Now, if you're concerned with your budget about uh, funding uh, the senior, I think uh, I think the dog people would probably contribute enough to do that, and we could do it by uh, uh, issuing uh, little colored uh, collars, little nylon collars, and uh, maybe twenty, twenty-five dollars, whatever we need to do, and we will wear those collars during that time frame that the that the birds are there. We can sell them here. We can sell some there at the. Uh, the parking area for the strangers to come in and don't know they have to have to have a collar. And I think the dog people will help police it. We walk along, we see a dog without a collar, we'll mention to them that they've got to do their part and contribute. And I, I think uh, that's a simplified kind of thing. We're solving a lot of problems. We're giving a senior a new, uh, new lease on life. My suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <coughs> Um, good evening, Katie Foley, 3 Lucky Lane. Um, at the last meeting, I admitted to all of you that I may have made a mistake by over-representing over, over my personal views uh, in negotiations. Um, I also mentioned that I don't represent all of these dog people. They all have their own opinion, and that's very, very true, um, both in the approach that we choose to take, the words we choose to speak, and any actions that we also choose to take. Uh, I fought with Mr. Summers all weekend long, and uh, many of these folks will attest that that's true. Uh, doesn't mean that him and I don't, we aren't on the same side in terms of what we ultimately would like, but we don't all agree. Um, so I told you at that meeting that my intent was to go back and to reach out to the supporters of dogs and uh, also the citizens of the town, and that's exactly what I've set out to do. Uh, I've created an online survey, uh, also reinstituted our phone bank and held a, a dog's listening meeting to hear what they had to say, to understand whether I was uh, inserting too much of my own ego, my own thoughts, my own compromises on what they want. Um, and so I gave, I only, I didn't have time to make copies, I apologize for that. Tody does have uh, a copy and she will be able to sh uh, make copies for all of you who would like to see that. Um, but here's what I would say about it, is there are indeed a wide continuum of opinions out there and we'll never make everybody happy. Uh, but what I can say with certainty is that if you pass the current proposal, you will surely face another referendum. Citizens are clearly uh, supportive of retaining and guaranteeing some off-leash time throughout the summer season. Uh, we've made over 500 calls and that is the one thing everybody, whether they were aware of the issue or not, uh, was adamant about. Um, the other thing that was very scary in making 500 calls, and we'll see where we get when we hit 2,000, is how many people are unaware. I mean, um, it's been in the paper every week, but still, so many people that we called do not even know that the, the vote didn't end this. So if I were in your shoes, I would be concerned about that. And I know in my shoes, I am concerned about that, and I feel like I have a duty to let them know. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about tonight is I've mentioned this before, this really is a regional issue. 
Um, it's something we should be reaching out not only to our local towns to support each other, but also to our state representatives, our governor, and other congressional electorate, electorates for help. Um, why are we so willing to let this federal agency tell us how to run our town when it's not within their legal authority to do so? The town manager has assured me that he's ready to do this, but only on the word of the council. So I ask, I ask you to ask yourselves, why haven't we done this after all this time? Why haven't we reached out for help against, it, against this federal agency? It seemed to help Saco very expediently. So I go back to the best science, and, and someone said it tonight, one bird in 33 years. When I weigh that against all of the users of the beach, the hundreds, the thousands even, of human activities that take place down there, kites, dogs, everything, the statistical significance should stand alone. Thank you. Catherine Rogers, 373 Gorham Road. Um, I'd like to talk about communication. Did you know that I've emailed the entire council five times since the beginning of December about the dog issue? Um, I know I've emailed prior to that, but I started keeping track in December. And of those five times, Councilor Katerina um, responded every single time, even if it's just to say thank you for expressing your opinion. Councilor Benedict um, responded to two different emails and then dialogued with me about the winter issue. And Councilor Holbrook responded once. The rest of you have not answered a single email that I've sent. And yet I've heard over and over throughout this whole fiasco that you want a dialogue with citizens. Sometimes what you do um, says a whole lot more than what you say. And often what you do matters more than what you intended by it. For instance, um, look at what happened after the referendum. The vote was over, the old ordinance was back in place, um, and instead of following the will of the majority of voters who put the old ordinance back into place, less than 24 hours later, you met and decided to form an ad hoc committee to change the ordinance. Um, whatever you meant by it, it doesn't look so good. Um, and then the ad hoc committee. The selection of the ad hoc committee was a travesty. I'm sure others will speak to that whole process, but <coughs> all I will say is the composition of the committee was inherently unfair and loaded to get the exact result that was desired. Um, drafting the ordinance, instead of having the ordinance committee draft this controversial ordinance, it was turned over to one counselor to draft. Um, one who took part in the selection of the committee, was part of the committee, um, and yet he's also the one who drafts the ordinance. Why would you choose to do that? Um, even, um, why even give the appearance of bias? Even if he it, it wasn't biased, why give the appearance of it? Why not go through the objective process that's already in town? Send it to the ordinance committee. Um, uh, the ordinance itself, or really the um, ordinance amendments and a couple of resolutions is what it is. Instead of creating new ordinance language, most of it is in the form of a resolution. Um, resolutions can be voted on and enacted without the benefit of the kind of notice requirements and public hearings that an ordinance amendment needs. Um, a resolution of this kind can't be overturned by a citizen's referendum. Regardless of what was intended by using this format, sometimes what you do says a lot more than what you say or what you <coughs> intend. Um, do you really want another referendum to learn that the citizens of this town are tired of fighting with those who should be working with them? Um, do you really need another referendum to learn that the citizens of this town are tired of their voice and their vote being ignored. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi. Amy Dorenzo, 3 Lucky Lane. I'd just like to read an excerpt from a news article entitled The Curious Case of the Piping Plover by Chris Friswick. At Bar Barnstable's Sandy Neck Beach, the annual tab for managing the plovers and some other birds runs to $92,000. The nonprofit Duxbury Beach Reservation 
also doesn't itemize plumber costs, but it spent nearly $150,000 last year on endangered species management, according to its annual report. At a time when cash-strapped communities are eyeing budget cuts for human programs, the plovers continue to do pretty well. Plymouth's Council on Aging, for instance, pays for a senior center, free meals, and other services. The town spent $310,000 last year on more than 2,500 elderly residents. To protect its population of about 40 plovers and their chicks, it spent $245,000. But even higher than the economic cost can be the frustration factor of being constantly kicked off the beach by tiny birds. To protect a dozen or so plover pairs this spring, Parker River National Wildlife Refuge in Newburyport announced most of its beach, ocean beach would be closed, even to pedestrians, from April until mid-August. There were additional closures at beaches in Wellfleet, at busy beach parking lots like Head of the Meadow and Truro, Nauset and Orleans, and elsewhere. Still, the experts haven't failed to notice that some of the most remote beaches can have the highest rates of predator attacks and therefore the lowest productivity among plovers. At the same time, some of the state's busiest beaches have posted exceptional productivity rates. That is only a portion of the article and the rest is available at boston.com. In a town where we don't even have a senior center, are we really ready to invest thousands and potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars into turning our beaches into wildlife sanctuaries, only to have the end result be to potentially cripple our economy by closing down our beach industries? If we end up with closed beaches, where will that tax money be coming from to fund these wildlife sanctuaries? Certainly not the businesses and oceanfront property owners. What will the oceanfront tax assessment be if there is no beach access? I realize that we do not have a crystal ball and cannot say with certainty that splitting our beaches and creating protected habitats will conclusively result in beach closures, but we do have history and can look at how this scenario has played out across the country. Please don't let Scarborough become another Plum Island. We cannot afford it. Thank you. Thank you. Margo Hodgkins, 19 King Street. I would like to thank all of you very much um, for those who replied to my email last night regarding the wording of resolution opposed to an ordinance. I'm still very concerned about using the resolution opposed to ordinance, and I'm very, I'm very much against that. Pine Point Beach is a very different beach opposed to the other beaches, and has been a problem for a long time. Coming up, trying to come up with solutions to this problem. It is very large. It has beach raking, fireworks. It is close to the march with predators and avian predators and is very, very populated during the summer months. It is also a private beach. The town owns in front of the public parking lot and has public access to the beach. I feel it is very difficult to tell private property owners that their land is now a protected zone and you must have your dog on a leash. If you tell private property owners on the beach that they have to have their dogs on a leash, then under constitutional law, you must tell all dog owners that they must have their dogs on a leash on their own property. Beachfront owners are growing very weary of being told no, 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 but the taxes are going up, up, up. The beaches should be used by the public and enjoyed by all. If we are looking at scientific data, then removing the dogs from the beach or leasing them all summer will not solve the issues for the plovers. If we really want to protect the plovers, we would stop the beach raking and the fireworks. Fireworks are the leading cause for nest and chick abandonment. By beach raking, we are moving all their food. If it took Audubon two weeks to find the chicks that moved down the beach from the jetty, how do we possibly expect a, pot, a spotter in front of the beach raking vehicles to find them in the dark? Beach cleaning begins between 4.15 and 4.30 in the a.m. However, there's a gentleman who walks to the beach every morning early with his dog, and he knows where the plovers nest, when they hatch, and where they have moved to, and when they have had their first flight. It is too bad that we cannot use these valuable resources to help monitor and protect the plover opposed to banishing them from the beach. By closing the beach to dogs once the chicks move, you are setting us up to fail. You remove all the plover's food so they will migrate down the beach to where the food will be replenished when the rising tide comes in. If we look at the history of where the plovers have nested and where they moved to in Pine Point, the beach will be closed before July 1st. I truly feel that enforcement and education is the key to success in this matter. There are still so many people who come to the beach in the summertime have no idea what a plover is. If nests and plover areas are well marked and monitored, we can help keep all predators away and we can share all our beaches. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Sean Flaherty, Black Point Road. I want to.
tell you briefly about two evenings. Uh, the first was April 1st, yesterday, last evening at Ferry Beach. The second I'll get to in a second was about Town Hall right here at Route 1 here in Memorial Park this evening, April 2nd. Got home from work yesterday, waited for my girlfriend to get back. She's a teacher in Pownall uh, Elementary Special Education. Uh, we caught enough sun now that the daylight savings has gone by and we're getting longer days to be able to catch the sunset at Ferry Beach and be able to exercise with our dogs, play some ball on Ferry Beach. It was wonderful. Except before we could even get our toes and our paws in the sand, somebody from, I believe, Maryland, based on all the license plates by the contractors in the parking lot, decided to inform me that I couldn't be there with my dogs because they were bulldozers. I told him I thought I knew the rules and he probably could have a nice day and uh, went along my way playing with our dogs. Acadia, a one-year-old beagle last month, and Lily, about to be three-year-old golden retriever, next month. Um, before leaving the beach, I took out my camera and videotaped the four-wheelers going back and forth by these contractors. The bulldozer type thing, backhoe, I forget the right name, caterpillar, coming down the beach, loud. This is the first day of piper ploving nesting season on one of our sanctuary beaches. And there are plastic pipes, hundreds of yards long, sitting in our dunes. And this could have been the first day when dogs were prohibited from the beaches. So the second night, tonight, decided after that experience last night I had to come here and talk. But more importantly, I got out of work, again, threw on my sweats, decided to come up here and check out the other dog uh, owners who were concerned. I brought my two dogs with me again. I put on their harnesses, knowing going up to Route 1, a busy traffic area, would probably be safer. But I also kept their normal leashes on because that had their tags, their names, and their phone numbers. We got out of the car, did the right thing again. They healed next to my side, crossed the, the crosswalk to the people in the dog costumes, and they started to bark, panic a little bit. Uh, about a minute or two had passed when the older dog, Lily, uh, broke her harness. And somewhere between bolting towards Route 1 a couple of times and being between parked cars, we avoided what could have been probably a police incident, in other words. She was smart enough, although scared, to go back to the car, where I got her back in the car and was able to reattach the leash to her collar. And why do I say this? Because Scarborough dog owners need public space. We don't need public dog parks like Portland. That's what the beaches are for. They're for all winter, they're for all spring, they're for all fall, and they need to be for a few hours each morning in the summertime. It's not a lot to ask for. I'll briefly just say one final thing without getting too much into this, but the truth is this convoluted system, the taxpayers here tonight, like us, the people who protested, the people speaking, we are the ones who are going to have to self-police and abide by these convoluted over-regulations. You'll put those of us who do respect our beaches, who do respect our neighbors, who do respect our visiting tourists and out-of-town, out-of-towners and out-of-staters, who do respect the plovers, you'll be putting us and risking our access to publicly owned lands at the expense of having to self-police and do the right thing at the expense of not really doing anything to protect the plovers from other people who won't follow the rules, or kites, or fireworks, or you name it. I'm severely disappointed in this ordinance, and I don't think you guys need to move forward on this. Uh, I don't mean to scare people with the incident of tonight, but that's why we need public places. That's what the beaches are for. I should have been down at Ferry Beach, and I shouldn't have been up here. Thank you. Matt. Thank you. <clears throat> Liam Summers, uh, Holmes Road, Scarborough. Um, Oh, can I just one minute? Yes, um, we're going to have to, um, Sue will have to be the last one because we've gone over a half an hour. Okay. That's council rules. Thanks. There's, uh, there's some other, um, the orders that are coming up that people could speak with. Sorry for interrupting you. No worries. I've understood. Um, the original fine for the supposed plover take by the dog was $12,000, and I say supposed take because still, to date, no incident report has been furnished. So, uh, still supposed in my mind. In deciding to combat that $12,000 fine, the town has now paid for a full referendum, a series of ad hoc meetings, 
innumerable town meetings on the subject, multiple lawyer consultations, and now likely headed to a second referendum and maybe a recall action and who knows whatever else. And I just want to know how much more shall we spend to save this $12,000. This new ordinance is convoluted at best. You must know that. It is unlikely, and it's likely very unenforceable. It turns over control of who gets to use the beaches to a special interest group, which is the Audubon Society. Make no mistake about it. If you categorize dogs as special interest, Audubon is the same. Or to a government agency like U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So if continued beach access is linked to the sighting of a plover outside of their new protected areas, let me tell you, it is not going to take a rocket scientist to realize how quickly the Audubon Society is going to have plover sightings all over the beaches. I've also heard that this council must take these actions on dogs to protect the interests of taxpayers of Scarborough. So let me address that. This is my 2013 tax bill. <coughs> Property taxes of $5,830 that I paid to the town of Scarborough. If this council is willing to waive my taxes in exchange for my rights to use these beaches, I'd like to have a discussion after this meeting, and I'd be willing to discuss that. Until then, I'm asking you, this council, to continue to allow the taxpayers of Scarborough the same access, reasonable access, to these beaches that everyone else has. In fact, upon election on this subject, after this had gone through the referendum, Mrs. Katerina herself was quoted as saying, the voters have spoken and we need to listen to that. And my question now is, what has changed from then to now? So again, I urge you, each counselor, to be very mindful in the manner in which you choose to support these ongoing efforts to restrict this beach access through these ordinances. These beaches are not now, nor were they ever intended to be, bird sanctuaries or private refuges for the privileged amongst us. These beaches were intended to be used by all citizens of Scarborough and should continue to remain open for that in a fair, balanced, and reasonable way, not subject to the whims and the desires of the minority or a select few. And additionally, once again, I would like to call on Councillor Donovan to recuse himself from the vote stemming from his work on the ad hoc committee. As a Higgins Beach resident with an extensive history of fighting to limit access to Higgins Beach, his participation in this vote is, in my opinion, unethical and does present a conflict of interest. Any vote which he participates in on this subject is going to appear to be tainted. So I thank you for your time, and I hope you consider that. Thank you. Hi, Suzanne Foley-Ferguson. Um, I, I will be commenting specifically on the ordinances, but one of the most unacceptable aspects of the way that this ordinance is written right now is that the most controversial part of it, the most detailed part of it, the actual crux of the whole thing is described in a resolution, which as you know can be changed, modified, strengthened without due process of an ordinance that requires a first reading, a public hearing, and a second reading. So you could accept it tonight, next week it could be on your agenda, five days notice, you get it in your packet on Friday and the next week it could be changed. Now for the people that have been following this process since last summer, through the citizen initiative election process, which is the ultimate demonstration of democracy, that's a huge slap in the face. Huge, because that's basically saying, well, we're, gonna, we're not gonna ever be able to have to do that again. Woohoo! We're gonna put it in resolution. So, <laughs> what is currently proposed is a way that any future council, not just you guys, could change one of the most heavily debated policies ever in this town without the benefit of the public participating through a hearing process in one night in, with less than one week's notice. In fact, tabling tonight, which is what I heard was the discussion, mm -hmm. and passing it on to the second reading is exactly what you're going to do. You're going to discuss these ordinances, but the actual crux of it, the protection areas, we aren't going to see tonight if you table it. We're only going to see it one time, and it's going to be over you know, in May or end of April. On a positive note, the actual ordinance is written, I noticed, to be restrictive rather than permissive. Uh, however, the definition of restricted is not defined in the ordinance. Again, it goes back to the resolution. So you can change the definition of restricted any time you want, five days notice, let's change what the restriction means. 
In addition, it allows the manager to take such action, temporary action, as may be necessary to protect the piping plovers. What that means to me is if there are tons of people and a plover has been killed, the manager can, at his discretion, decide to close the beach, for instance. Um, if, if there's, you know, a bird, basically this gives too much power to the town manager in a resolution, in my opinion. Um, on, like I said, on a positive note, the actual ordinance is written, but unfortunately said resolution may subject the town to greater risk and more liability because it's more akin to the Plymouth case, which you just got an email about, an opinion from an alternative uh, attorney. This proposal right now as it sits is essentially taking away all off-leash time. Make no mistake, the birds are going to move. They move up to a mile, they go feeding, whatever. I talked to counsel, I want to thank Councillor uh, Katerina and Councillor uh, St. Clair, who I've spoke with in depth. One of the things I mentioned was if we have a rainy season, let's say we have three rainy weeks, what do you think the birds are going to do? Oh, they're going to wander. You want to know why? Because it's people that are the limiting factor to a bird's travel. <laughs> it's not the dogs. It's the people. And if there are no people on that beach, the birds are going to move. And then all of a sudden, the next day, people come, boom. Change, using this whole wandering bird idea of closing the beaches or have, requiring them to be on leashes is just really another way of saying there's no off-leash time in the summer. And that was where we started way back last year. And even if we hadn't, even if the ordinance hadn't been sort of done townwide, you still would have had a referendum. There were enough people that wanted to do a referendum. Did I hear a click? Did I hear a beeper? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I, I, I'm deaf in one ear. I don't know if you know that, but I am deaf in one ear, and I don't <laughs> hear. But it seemed like it was long. Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, that's it. Thank you. I will now close the public hearing. It's 45 minutes. <clears throat> okay, uh, minutes of March 19th, regular meeting. Move approval. Second. Any comments? <coughs> Errors or omissions? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Item 6, is there any adjustments to the agenda? No. Okay, none at this time. Treasurer's warrants, I'll be signing those. Okay. Resolution 1403 is act on the request to approve the resolve to create protected beach areas. I wonder if I could speak to the perhaps speak to a couple of the points raised this evening yes. in terms of the basic constructs of the pieces in front of the council. Yes, 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 it would be. So forgive me, I, my comments may vary beyond resolution 1403. That's what's before the council now, but I think that it's relevant as these pieces are all interrelated. As has been observed, there are essentially five different components before the council on this agenda, uh, all, in, all intending to uh, move forward and advance the proposal that the council uh, worked through and workshop and gave uh, general direction to the staff to, to, to begin putting it in final form, and this is where we're at tonight. Uh, it was upon my suggestion that this piece, this protected area um, or beach area notion, the better place in a resolution. And I was mindful of many of the points made this evening in terms of uh, adoption process, and um, the speakers tonight were quite r right. The resolution process uh, is not as rigorous as the ordinance process. Uh, but I would note that the ordinance, uh, in relevant part, uh, I think it's 16, 604.10a, this is the Animal Control Ordinance, establishes the basic notion of protected area, which is a concept that doesn't exist. Uh, to date. And so I would suggest that the legislative authority, if you will, or intent is in fact encapsulated within an ordinance and the council, should they wish to modify the basic principles, would need to reach back into the ordinance, whether it's this council or future council. So I, I think there are built-in protections to speak to some of the concerns expressed. Uh, further, my suggestion for containing this piece of the puzzle in a resolution was really born out of practicality. Um, it was my, it's still my opinion, others, uh, council may disagree with it, that the best way to convey this concept uh, for everyone's purpose and to educate folks is, is through graphics and through maps. Um, typically, ordinances um, are left for, 
for fairly concise wording, for very specific wording. Uh, this sort of concept doesn't fit well in the context of an ordinance, in my opinion, uh, nor do attachments such as exhibits and maps, which I think is the best way to convey this notion. Uh, that was my thought process for proposing it in the way it's before you this evening. I assure you, on my behalf, there was no ulterior motive to try to sneak something through. I thought it was the best way to convey a fairly difficult uh, concept to actually put on the, on the face of the earth. Uh, so I, I'll reserve further comments for the different uh, further elements, but I think that speaks to the issue that's in front of council. Okay, uh, first, anyone from the public that would like to speak to this resolution exactly to the protected beach areas? That's the only thing um, that you can speak to on that. Uh, Seth Fernald, 45 Maple Avenue, Scarborough. Uh, still, I understand the, uh, there may be some pros uh, to putting that aspect in a resolution. The cons still far outweigh them. If we can't define a street by a street name, then we're having issues with our legislation where we're writing everything. Most of these areas are defined very well by barriers and boundaries. To put that much weight and to restrict these beaches based on a resolution which is so easily enacted and amended without any public input, I think would be a great folly. If, if we're not aware of the situation of how a resolution acts at this point, I think that's something we should really look at. Uh, and uh, it's just, if there's any pros, being that you, can't put, you cannot put a graphic in an ordinance, if that's an actual fact, then I think using our streets, which we have named, I think we're all they're named everywhere, if we can't use that, then I think we need to scrap everything and start over from the very beginning. Uh, I think a lot of the input for this, uh, the, the ordinance for directing if a plover is cited or not will be put on Audubon and IFW. This is the same IFW who stopped the dredging threatening the, all the fishermen, fishing in the Scarborough River. It's the same IFW is allowing Saco houses to fall into the water until their town council had to step up and stop that. So if we're going to put our hand, or put that resolution in the hands of IFW and Audubon to spot the plovers, that's just, remember who this IFW, what they're willing to do to, to protect the plover. Um, Putting those restricted areas in that resolution also, it does bring back thoughts of what happened in Kennebunk where the town tried to enforce their will on the, on the private town owners. My fear is if we pass this or, that resolution, not even ordinance, a resolution to protect those areas and tell the private landowners what they can do, my fear is that they're going to post their land. That's what happened in Kennebunk, and that opened up uh, a big issue there. So posting the land, if that's what we're trying to get the town people to do, to post their land and make that entirely off limits to anybody using the beach. That's another road we're going down, I believe. Um, I guess the, uh, the 11 to 2 time in the winter is technically in the ordinance, not the resolution. I'll speak to that real quick so I don't have to walk back up. Not allowing people to walk their dogs off leash in the winter from 11 to 2, that is the only prime time in the winter where the sun comes out and it might Excuse get above me. 20 you degrees. To, you have to stick to the resolve. I'll be back. Please. All right, All right. Thanks. thank you. Next. Uh, Robert Rosen, 14th Street. Um, I don't understand why we're talking about this now. We haven't even talked about the ordinance. So it seems to me that Resolution 1403, act on the request to approve the resolve to create a protected beach areas. We haven't spoken about protected beach areas. We're not talking about protected beach areas until we get to the first reading, which isn't until we get, I believe, to order number 1413. So why would we want you to vote on the resolve to create protected beach areas when we don't even know if there are going to be any. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Catherine Rogers, um, two quotes from the uh, resolve. Daily monitoring of Chick's location at the direction of the town plover coordinator is required for continued allowance of off-leash privileges. Daily monitoring. Sounds expensive. Um, this quote is, comes from the section about Higgins Beach. Uh, probably shouldn't be in that section. Um, and then my question is, daily monitoring is required for continued allowance of off-leash privileges. So if the plover coordinator fails to monitor daily, then what, no off-leash privileges? Is that really what was intended? Because that's what it says. 
Um, second quote, under unusual and unanticipated or emergency circumstances, the town manager is authorized to take such temporary action as may be necessary to protect piping plovers until the town council can address the matter. Um, that's giving rather broad discretionary powers to the town manager, and I think it's inappropriate. Um, and what's a piping plover emergency? Uh, <laughs> if we have a piping plover emergency, there's no need for hearings, no need for first readings, no need for second readings. The town manager just can take whatever actions are necessary. Um, I think that's too broad and uh, too much power for the town manager. But thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Thank you very much. Julie Han, 14 Mass Road. Um, I didn't prepare a statement for tonight, but I would like to speak to it because I have sent you information regarding incidental takings. I think if we set up a uh, segregated beach area for dogs and we end up with an incidental taking, I think what we're doing is we're setting a precedent that we as a town are taking responsibility for the piping plover. Um, the lawsuit, uh, Brigham, Brigham Oil versus U.S. government, Ma'am, um, uh, you're supposed to speak to the resolve. I am speaking. You, the, you the asked resolve, me to speak to the. I meant you can further down. There's other chances for you to speak if it doesn't have to do. I'm with the speaking resolve. to the restriction that you just told us we could speak to the restriction of the beach area. Okay. That's what you asked me to speak to, All correct? Right, well, you, yes. well, I'm comparing it to at what happens when you set up those areas and you allow dogs in these very restricted areas. If the dog, if a plover happens to be in that area and there is a taking, it becomes an incidental taking. We are not responsible for that. But if we are setting up an area in which we are saying we are protecting the plover, we are now saying that we are taking responsibility for the plover. What I'm asking you to do is not set a precedent, and that is creating an ordinance that is meant to protect the plover. Setting up this restricted area is meant to protect the plover. You may not have that in the words, but everything we've been meeting about mm -hmm. has been to protect the plover. That's why okay. I Okay, all right, thank you. Just uh, it, for the benefit of the public, I, I want to just read from a um, uh, note that an attorney from one, uh, one of the citizens in the town chat, um, sent to the town council regarding um, the town taking a plover and why this protected area could be a, a lot a more of a liability than the current ordinance. Um, the key to his analysis that the town's ordinance be passive had to do with the loggerhead turtle case. His understanding right now is the town's considering um, an a, a more active set of protections, including the tag system and combination of the zones, a protected zone and a non-protected. This is more akin to the town of Plymouth case than your current ordinance, in which a municipality was held liable for a take because it affirmatively, affirmatively allowed off-road off vehicles on the beach. So if you, if you divide the beach into two protected zones and somebody takes it it sounds as though this lawyer would say, now you are responsible, even though his analysis last time, you're not responsible. Um, one of the things I asked, it was mentioned, this is right in the resolution. Um, you've restrict, you've, the, under Ferry and Western Beach, it says dogs must be leashed on Ferry Beach if there's a nest on Western Beach. So even if the bird isn't feeding or anything, but you have to leash them on Ferry Beach. Well, a couple of things. Ferry Beach that you allow any off-leash time at all is a private beach, and it's Prout's Neck. And it's, it can be closed just like the western beaches. So that's not going to work unless you're um, leaving open the public part of that beach. The other thing is it says regulations applicable to all beaches once the chicks migrate. Okay. Who's determining that again? Is that Audubon, who has misled us? Is it U.S. Fish and Wildlife, who's misconstrued in a civil document? So what does migration mean and what's the definition? And then it says the prior regulations again apply. What are the prior regulations? Not sure what that means in this resolution. So once chicks migrate from a beach, the prior regulations apply. Not sure. And then the last thing was, you know, the, the town manager authorized to just basically close the beaches. And it sounds as though 
they could close it to whatever, not just for animals. It, they could close it to people also if there was an emergency for piping plovers. I just think it's a real overstep. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Maureen Byrne, 6 Morning Street. I haven't prepared anything, um, but this is in response to the resolution. It seems to me that whenever we've had a survey done or a deed search, you may have um, a plot done, but you also have everything written down specifically in, in a, you know, sentences and words, and, and it doesn't negate. Um, they make themselves, I'm not doing a very good job of this, but they, they make them, the surveyor will write out exactly what he means and where it is in words. It doesn't, it, he doesn't need graphics to show where a certain area is. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Close that. Um, motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? I, yes, Mr. No. Chair, I had a, uh, a, a clerical motion, a motion to add, uh, to amend the main motion <clears throat> by adding a sixth whereas, and I believe these have been distributed to the people in the audience. Mm -hmm. Have we? There were some copies. I, I, I fear I didn't have enough, but uh, perhaps folks can circulate them. And them. the purpose of this is uh, to make clear that the resolution that we're talking about is linked to the specific ordinance provision. It's really, uh, in drafting, there was no specific reference, and there really ought to be, so that there's, it's really in the nature of a clarification. So the new whereas would be, quote, whereas section 604-10A establishes protected areas, the specific de designation of which is set forth below. Is it? No. That's, and that's the motion. motion. Motion to amend. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion on the amendment. I think it's good. It does a good job of clarifying it. Yeah. Really is an effort just to link the two together uh, with specific references so that there's no confusion uh, uh, if somebody came along and read this and said, what does this mean? They realize that they need to read 60410A in conjunction with this resolution. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I, I know when I first uh, read the resolutions when they came out, that was one of my specific concerns with the resolution also was the link back to the ordinances because as people in the audience have spoken to, um, when you read it just as is, it's like uh, to what is it linking. So this makes sense to me. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, uh, Councilor Sinclair. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I have, you know, I, I think I've been pretty vocal about it. I have some reservations about this whole thing. Um, I'm, I don't feel like I'm prepared tonight to vote on it. Um, I've spent the last week really um, trying to talk to different sides and, and people in the community and some of my other counselors um, because I don't want to, I've said this numerous times, I don't want to make the same mistakes that I made last time. Um, and that's not saying that I'm not going to support this eventually. What I'm saying is I want to make sure that I'm processing everything. And I, and I will admit I had a little injury at the beginning of the week and that has um, kind of taken me out of commission for a few days. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit even more behind um, than where I wanted to be. Um, I just don't, I don't want to vote for something until I'm completely 100% clear on it and I feel good about it. Um, and I don't tonight. 
Mr. Chair, if I yeah, I was just going to say what we're what we're um, what we're speaking to is uh, the motion amendment. to the resolution amendment rather to the resolution made by Councilor Donovan, um, which is here in writing, and um, then we'll vote on the main motion. So, Mr. Can I so, just yes, ask for clarification yeah. so that um, by if we were to support this, all this does is add this section then to the resolution and then we move forward and Correct. discuss. Okay. Yeah. I just need that clarification. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of adding the amendment to the resolution? Opposed? Okay. Back to the main motion with the amendment. Discussion. Councilor <laughs> Holbrook. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so, well, where to start? So, actually, it was um, one of the things I actually favored was having the pictures. I, I thought that that helped add a little clarity it's about to have that visual image. Um, so, you know, when I saw that, I was kind of supportive of that. I remember that it was helpful for to, to me as we were looking at things and, you know, especially through the workshop to have that visual item to say, okay, this beach at this spot, this is where the nests were, this is what we're proposing. I, I thought the visual helped, but, you know, that, whether or not it has a place, I, I, I don't have a preference either way. Um, for me, it was more of a, a good way to put the information out. As far as if whether or not what kind of follows along with the visual, the, the resolution itself, if that gets built into the ordinance later. I, I mean, the purpose of tonight was to at least have that out there for everybody to look at and everybody to see, and so everyone knew where we were talking about. Um, the purpose for tonight would be um, after discussion so that we've all talked about it a little bit. Um, there's some ideas about tabling the resolution to our next meeting. Um, I don't have any heartburn with it either way. I just thought, personally, I thought it made it a little easier so everybody, like I said, knew where, what we were looking at. Um, it does help with the link back um, with the amendment that just had it. Um, the only thing that I, I guess I have, um, if we're going to keep the resolution and move forward, that um, out of some of the things that were mentioned tonight, and just something on my own that I also kind of read and thought it could be misconstrued a little bit. Um, the word migrate comes up repeatedly. Um, for me, when, when in our workshop when we were discussing migrate and, and the birds leaving, you know, I'm sorry, the chicks. <laughs> you have to choose my words carefully. When right. the if the chicks start moving around and they maybe wander over onto another section of beach, um, just for clarity purposes, it was my intent that if they wandered over, okay, maybe the beach needed to be closed for a day or two, but when they wandered back, you know, the beach is released again to off-leash dogs. Um, so maybe it's a missing word. There maybe is a word smithing that needs to happen so that, you know, what that word is that follows after it. I'll, I'll, I'll let them... <laughs> I'll let the manager, who is probably a bit better at that, um, pick over the wording of it. But, um, you know, I, I just kind of, you know, like I said, migrate back to the protected area, then the area is really, you know, but, but something. There, there has to be another couple words there behind the word migrate in those paragraphs. And I think that will help for a little more clarity. Um, other than that, like I said, it doesn't make or break it. If we walk away from the resolution and wordsmith it to, say, the actual wordage in the ordinance, I'm, I'm good with that too. So, Councilor Katrina. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, when I first got this, I, I have to say I reacted the way some of the people in the audience did. I looked at it and I said, a resolution. Why would we pass a resolution, particularly pass a resolution today, um, when you haven't even talked about the ordinance that's referring back and linking back to the resolution and whatever? So that's why. Um, the verbiage being added uh, helps with the link back, which is great. Um, uh, with Jessica, I also uh, asked, um, and I, and my, I have these scribbles here that I do when I read <laughs> ordinances, whatever, about 
um, my thoughts and questions. Um, is uh, my question was, what's clarification of what constitutes a movement of the chicks, uh, and what do we mean by migration? And I, I just asked it that way, you know, straight out, not particularly thinking, you know, daily, monthly, weekly, hourly. I don't know. But I would agree with Jessica that uh, some further uh, definition of, of that may be helpful. Um, regarding the town manager, the insertion of the town manager, I'll take, I'll take, it's my fault that that got put in there. I'll, I'll own it. Uh, and part of that is because we do have other ordinances or resolutions, I believe. Anyway, I can't think off right off the top of my head. Uh, it's just, to me, it's a matter of what if something came up, and like you, I'm like, I don't know what a clever emergency would be, but um, if something came up and for some reason you had to sh do something with the beach, um, it gives the town manager its temporary opportunity because you notice it says until the town council can address it. Maybe that needs to be firmed up more, but you know, I'll own that. I'm the one that suggested that that be put in there. Um, and uh, what else did I have? Uh, Sue Foley Ferguson had asked the question about Ferry Western Beach. You know, if you've got dogs leashed, why are dogs leashed if the plovers are on the western part and not the ferry part? Because it kind of does whatever it does, jo does jog there. Um, and I, 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 my answer to that, if in my thinking through, was the creation of, of a buffer. Uh, and I would, uh, you know, and again, I'm going to go through a couple things, and I definitely would like counselors to jump in on that. Um, and then I have a very provocative question that I would like to pose. I know what I would give for an answer to this, but I thought of it because when I'm looking at ordinances and resolutions and whatnot, I try to look at it from the viewpoint of those who may be concerned with what we're passing. And that is, can we just allow limited off-leash time in non-protected areas? In other words, so what if the chicks are running around in there, if they come over or don't, can we just have, an, uh, in the non-protected areas, the limited off-leash time period, no other whatever on it, um, as far as, you know, if a chick cross over, doesn't cross over, whatever. Now, my own answer to that, is that my understanding in the reading of the citations and everything else that came down from U.S. Fish and Wildlife and whatever is um, the reason that we were cited as a town was because the bird was taken during an allowed time. Uh, so that's part of the whole picture. So, and I'm probably babbling here somewhat, but anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm just throwing those out. If, I would love it if other counselors would weigh in. Just and, and my intent in doing this is so that we have some public discussion, so the public can hear what some of our thoughts are. That's it. Okay. Anyone down here? Um, I'll go again. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I also um, was really concerned when I saw it come across as a resolution. Um, for a lot of the reasons that were expressed and also that were expressed by um, some of my fellow counselors. Uh, it took some explaining from Tom and I think his um, reasonings behind it are um, very well intended. It was not done in a malicious way. It wasn't done as trying to, you know, get something through. Um, I think the problem is that I wish if we could go back and do it again, and there I think there should have been an explanation um, maybe possibly <coughs> given before it came out, only because we're struggling right now. Um, it's no big secret that some, there are a group of people in the community that aren't very happy with us. Um, and so I feel like the more communication that we can have, the more dialogue that we have, I'm hoping that that you know will end up being a good thing. So my issue with the resolution was just that I didn't see I didn't see it coming, and it took me off guard. And I don't know. Um, yeah, and I, and I'm I'm not going to vote on it tonight. Not ready. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> that you know, um, tonight we heard on the resolution a lot of um, public input. Um, we've taken notes. And I think Tom's on his second page now. Um, and um, no, I don't think this uh, is you know um, proper to vote on tonight. I think it needs more looking at into. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, see what we can do to refine or change things to make the uh, this work better. Um, was there any further comment, uh, Councilor Donovan? Yeah, and I I think these comments are are good ones about about the little, get the little aspects of this right. I think that's all true. But the the for the public who's out there, kind of saying, what is this about? I'm just going to I'm just going to comment from 50,000 feet. What this is designed to do is to take the peculiarities of each beach, uh, locate mm -hmm. the places where plovers traditionally nest, which is at the river ends of uh, Higgins Beach by the Spurwink River and the river end of Pine Point Beach, which is the Scarborough River, uh, and try and create. Uh, restrictions that do not have dogs running around in those areas uh, and then the rest of the beach is left open to the same rules that have always existed and that really is the idea here is to uh, have space where dogs can uh, throughout the plover season be off leash uh, and still be on the beach, and so that's that's the goal here. That's what we've set out to do: is to have. And this this proposal of a divided beach wa is one that's uh, we got numerous dogs people uh, proposing it. it uh, a form of it was proposed in, at the, the ad hoc committee uh, by dogs people. It was uh, uh, we got emails from dogs people proposing different forms of this. This was an idea that came <coughs> more from dogs people than from the, uh, hey, that, no. that, w that was the genesis of the idea. It did not come from the people on the ad hoc committee who were uh, supportive of uh, significant plover protection. That's not the genesis of this, this idea. Uh, so I just want the public to know that's the goal here, is to find a way to have dogs be able to be off leash on the beach throughout the plover season. Uh, and so we're making our best effort at trying to establish some rules that would allow that to happen. And that's what this resolution is about. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Could I just offer a clarifying comment? Uh, it, it was. I think the question was raised at the podium and perhaps uh, hip up here at the council table. The reason that this resolution appears before uh, the other matters, and, and admittedly it seems a bit out of, out of line, that is a function of the town charter. The charter dictates uh, the form the agenda takes and where certain matters appear, regardless of subject and content. They're really organized by whether it's an order, resolution, new business, old business. So. There's no mystery behind that. The, uh, forgive me, Tony. Is it the town charter or the, or the council rules? Council rules. Uh, at any rate, there is a prescribed method for every agenda, and this follows that. Okay. Thank you. What is the what, what is the possibility of getting this written into the ordinance? I mean, the only thing that we have attached to this is an aerial views, right? Three aerial views. I can't answer that. <clears throat> I think it's certainly possible to wordsmith the language such that uh, the the substance would could exist within the ordinance. I think um, having the exhibits or the graphics would be the most challenging part, and that's really a, a question for council whether that's of value to you and more importantly for the education of the the wider population. Um, I mean, if people are are concerned that. Mm -hmm. Council in future is going to make behind our back changes and everything like that. Um, I mean, this is a big part of the ordinance. Let's just write it into the ordinance. 
throw three pictures as part of it. We, we'll, we'll have time. We can look at that. As, as the chair of the ordinance committee, I, I'm encouraging of that, if we can do it. Uh, I, I know that I, I would be fine with that, because I do know that uh, some of the emails and comments I received from citizens were concerned with what I would call redress by citizens, of if they felt it was this wasn't something that's right for Scarborough to have the right to redress, and there was some confusion. And I, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, and I wouldn't know how to answer it. But is, what's the difference between redress with a resolution as opposed to an ordinance? And I think an ordinance is more easily redressed. But I could be wrong. But that was my original, actually, reaction too, okay. with when it came out as a resolution. That was part of my reaction. So. Mm -hmm. Council Donnelly? Uh, whenever uh, people feel they've had an opportunity to say what they'd like to say about the resolution, after that's done, I'd be happy to offer a uh, motion to table. Uh, I don't want to be premature on that, but I do, uh, if people are, have had their say on this, uh, I'll, make that, uh, I'll make that motion. Is um, anyone down? Uh, everyone's all set down there. Everybody's set up here. I guess we're... we're I'm just going to copy Jean Marie and say I'll own the pictures because that was my bright <laughs> idea. So, um, But, yeah, I I'm certainly would be supportive of putting it in an ordinance, and that was my last two cents, so feel free to offer your motion. <laughs> okay. A motion to table? Second. Okay, there's a motion to table, table to, to the May 7th meeting? To the May 7th meeting. Okay. Uh, second? second? Okay, second. Um, is there any dis Oh, there's no discussion at all. It's not discussed below. We vote on it. So, um, all those in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, unanimous. Resolution 1404 is act on the request to approve the result to establish the C9 Education and Enforcement Ad Hoc Committee. Okay. Um, so we're taking public comment on this, and to keep your comments to Canine Education <laughs> Enforcement Ad Hoc Committee. This is what we're talking about, the resolution that will form a Canine Education and Enforcement Ad Hoc Committee. I have to say my name and address again. Katie Foley, 3 Lucky Lane. And don't ask me for the acronym that you just said, because I don't know what that is. Uh, my only comment about the... Canine Enforcement Ad Hoc and, and enforcement Committee ad hoc. would be this, <clears throat> is I urge you to please uh, use caution as you select this next committee to carry work forward, uh, that you learn <clears throat> from mistakes of the past uh, in terms of how names were recommended and vetted for the Animal Control Ad Hoc Committee, make it an open application process. Um, I think that's just very, very, very important. Um, you can gavel me out, but I'm going to say one thing to the public if you want to, and that is that I am the only dogs person that made a recommendation to split beaches, and it was very different than what you said, and I cannot, uh, you cannot allow, you cannot gavel the public out constantly for using people's names and then allow counselors to do it. It's not okay. Use my name if you want to use my name when I'm in the room, and I'll be happy to have a conversation. I've asked you to have coffee. You've refused many times. Please don't use my name or dogs' names as a group. There's three of them. All right. Thank you. Next. Um, I think establishing this committee is premature until the ordinances are dealt with. Um, and this time around, since it is a committee to deal with dogs, just like the last one was, um, you have people on the committee who actually work with dogs. Uh, there are a lot of people in this town who have extensive knowledge with dogs. Uh, it would be appropriate to have them on the committee uh, at this time around. Um, the tag system, I don't have a lot to say about that, but please understand that that system 
is from Boulder, Colorado, a huge area, very and dog we, friendly. We have to stay on on canine education. We're talking about ad hoc committee. Isn't the ad hoc committee it it doesn't doesn't charged oh. with establishing the tag system? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. That's yes. fine. Um, the tag system uh, is from Boulder, Colorado, which is a much bigger, more populous area, much more dog friendly, um, with lots of trails, dog parks, massive amounts of real estate that's, that's dedicated to off-leash dogs. They have a need for that kind of tag system there. <coughs> with all the regulations that you're um, trying to establish here, adding a tag system of, the, of that sort is overkill. Um, and uh, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, just uh, Sue Foley Ferguson, just on the ad hoc committee. Councillor um, Katerina sent over um, information about one of the workshops, and one of the action items that the workshop council was supposed to have was petition for the inclusion of the areas north and east of Scarborough Beach in the essential habitat designation. And the action that you all agreed on, all of you, was to refer to the ongoing committee. That's not in here. The other item that's not in here is exploring whether Ferry Beach can be delisted um, from the, um, so there are two items that should have been in here to explore from the ad hoc committee, and I just want to make a point of that. And the other one is to delist de uh, Fair Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Liam Summers, Holmes Road. Uh, just with regard to the creation of an ad hoc committee, whether that's appropriate to consider or not this evening, um, regardless, what I would ask of you is, since the creation of the prior ad hoc committee uh, drew rounded criticism, I would uh, urge you to be more open and transparent in your selection process, to allow for everyone that is interested to petition to be a part of that, and in the interests of fair play, to remove those DOGS members or counselors included who have uh, a significant bias one way or the other from being part of that committee. Uh, the, the purpose of your jobs and the purpose of a committee is to do what's best for the most and to do that in an open and transparent manner. Uh, and so there is a trust deficit that has to be closed. And so I would ask you, I would urge you to close that by allowing this to be a more transparent process for those who are selected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff Fernald, uh, Maple Ave. Uh, canine education and enforcement. If this were in lieu of the resolution and in lieu of the ordinance, I'd be, I think we'd all be happy we could go home. Uh, the one plover killing in 30 years, if we had education and enforcement, say stretch that out till we had one plover killing in 40, 50 years, I think everybody would think that'd be a pretty good success. So if this were instead of the ordinance or resolution, sign me up. Sign everybody up and I think you have a winner there. I don't think the resolution and the ordinance need to go with this, so this is what I think will get you very far. Thank you. Thank you. Julie Hannon, 14 Mass Road. Um, I'm wondering if you have looked at the Federal um, Wildlife and Fisheries uh, wild, Wildlife Service uh, recommendations on uh, taking action for uh, protecting the plover. And the reason I say that is because I would like the ad hoc committee to take into consideration, any ad hoc committee to take into consideration, consideration section 10 of that, which allows permits to be issued for the take that is incidental to and not the purpose of carrying out an otherwise lawful activity. If walking your pet is lawful in the town of Scarborough on the beach during a particular time, then I believe that we should have requested a permit for that take. And I would like our ad hoc committee to investigate that for us. Thank you. No applause. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. 
just if I could clarify yes, for, for no, the benefit of council, it was suggested that there were uh, notably two items not included in these uh, in this list of tasks or duties. Uh, just incidentally, this committee is kind of relegated to deal with <coughs> all the longer term issues, the ones that aren't dealt with in one fashion or another in the action items uh, on this agenda. Uh, and those two issues were mentioned as um, both involving essential ha habitat in the first instance, uh, potentially expanding essential habitat designation in the area of Scarborough Beach to the north and east, and then at Ferry Beach to perhaps uh, remove that area from that designation. Forgive me, but I've kind of made the generic task. Uh, it's the second to last bullet bulleted point. Work with the plumber coordinator regarding the designation of es essential habitat. That was my, you might say, feeble attempt at capturing those two notions, uh, but making it broad enough that they would have some latitude to consider the issues related to those designations. So the intent was is there. And Co-op Beach. Yes, I beg your pardon. There was also a suggestion through the ad hoc committee and tacitly endorsed uh, as a concept by the council, which is to look at designated co-op beach as a dog specific location, mm -hmm. uh, which would require, again, uh, redesignation of the essential habitat. <coughs> okay. Any any other council comments? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I would agree with the speakers tonight um, as regarding the selection process, and, mm -hmm. and I would point out, uh, now I can't find it, but um, at least the way I'm reading this resolution is that it is like when people want to be on any other committee in town, they would apply, go through an application process. Like I know when I was on a the conservation committee, I filled out an application. <coughs> And then it went through the appointments committee. So that is how I assume, I, am, am I correct, in how this, this would work in the selection of people for this committee? That's, the, that's yes. correct. That's it the way it was drafted to follow the normal procedure for appointments. Five. Uh, yeah, this, and five. five members, right? It finds that that's the way it will be yeah, run okay. through the. Oh, and, to and Tody's whispering in my ear that she get the applications up if it's approved right away. She put applications up. Right, there'll be applications. That's correct for the for the committee, and it'll be um, the applications will be reviewed um, by the um, appointments committee. My my question then to all of us is: Is this something we want to move? tonight so that they can get to work, or should this be part of the overall package? That's my question. Well, I, um, the, um, it would be I'm looking, in other words, are I we moving this tonight well, and voting on this tonight? I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of thinking it that it package. should be, you know, um, adopted if, if it's, you know, as a whole package. I like the idea of having it being adopted as a whole package because it gives the uh, uh, opportunity to give us more input. We're not going to vote on this right. as an entire package until the first meeting in May. May, yep. Uh, we're going to have a public hearing on April 16th. And so it will give us some opportunity to get this right. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, questions came up tonight and they were answered. Right. Uh, that those issues had been taken into account. There may be other questions. So uh, I'd be, I, I realize that it's important to get this going, but I think it's also important to make sure that the whole package is right. right. Councilor Holbrook. So um, I just wanted to kind of voice my opinion where um, <laughs> I will, I'm the appointments chair this year, so. Um, I also chair finance committee, which, as you know, is in full swing, yeah. meeting weekly, as well as I expect this to be probably a lengthy process going through the applications and selections. And so it would be my preference that we pass this tonight, which would allow for that extra amount of time mm -hmm. to allow for the applications to come in. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take a fair amount of review. So, mm -hmm. um, and as I said, 
budgets also full swing. So right. I, I would personally prefer it to move through tonight so we can start with that. I might suggest at the risk of being presumptuous, but unless I hear some great objection to the basic concept put forth, I, I, I hear there being general support. We could certainly initiate the process and begin um, accepting applications uh, right away, short of the final adoption, uh, and that, that piece could start right away, if, again, unless there's great objections to that suggestion. If that's allowed to happen, I wasn't sure if we needed the committee in place or not. But yeah, if we can I think start before the application you make the appointments, process, the committee ought to exist. But I think you can go through the process to do so. Um, I, I just offer that as a suggestion to to meet you halfway. <laughs> there isn't anything in the resolution that links it back to the ordinance provisions that will be voted on on May seventh. So, I mean, it is it is possible to pass this today, and we wouldn't uh, uh, we wouldn't be uh, uh, failing to tie it to something else that that we're moving forward with. So, okay, can't can't we just uh, can't we just table it and then still accept applications yes. for a proposed committee? Yes. No. Yes. No, I'm seeing a. Cody's shaking her head. Tom Clark is shaking, Cody's shaking, her, shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I. She does have something concrete in this place. Can, can I interject? I'm mean, not expecting as appointments to be able to really meet for, I mean, I would think a month anyway. If we're talking a month before we're passing something, we're probably going to be a month just trying to gather applications and then going through them and. and Every application that comes in has to be discussed as an appointments committee. So, again, I'm just trying to, in my head, kind of line that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I, get, I would assume the goal is to try to have, there was some verbiage in here about mm -hmm. September, if I'm not mistaken, the ship sunset in September 1st. Yeah. Um, I expect there will probably be a lot of interested people that want to be mm -hmm. on this committee. So, yeah. you know, I'm, like I said, thinking in my own head a month just to filter through the applications. Um, yeah. Five. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Can I say something? Um, yes, Count, Council Sinclair. Uh, my initial feeling on that was it would be my preference, obviously. I've stated this already, that I would rather table it and, and put it all together so that, once again, we're making sure that that's exactly what we want. Um, but after listening to Councillor Holbrook, I have to, Holbrook, I have to agree with her. Um, it is going to be a process for us to get through all those, and we want to do it the right way and the best way, um, and that's going to take time. And so it is. I think that probably we should move forward with this. Um, that this one part of the resolution so that we can get that started. It's gonna, and it gives, uh, it gives people time, too, to get their applications in. Those applications, there's a couple questions on there that can take a little bit of time and planning, so um, it gives people a little bit of extra time, too. So my preference, I guess, at this point would be to move forward with that. Council Benedict, uh, Council Blaze. I just question why we're putting a time limit of September 1st on it. I, th I, th I think we want, it, it, there is a degree of urgency to get the work done. It's really a working group environment. It's a roll up your sleeves kind of situation to get uh, <coughs> in anticipation of having uh, regulations in place that will require us to uh, have a better education program, a better enforcement program, better to mo better monitoring. All of these things are going to fall on the shoulders of these people, and they're all they all need to be in place ASAP. <coughs> the plover season is April 1 to August 31, so it started yesterday. So that that's why this it's a tight time frame because it's going to be people who. Uh, join this committee should be ready to work on a very expedited basis to get the work done. Anyone 
Council Benedict, anybody? Is that it? So it sounds like it's unanimous to um, move it forward tonight. Okay. Need a vote. Yep. Uh, right. All those in favor? Opposed? No? Okay. Yes. Under Old Business 14 3rd, the second reading on the bond order for the 2014 municipal school capital improvement. Okay, and this will be a roll call. Do I have a motion? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed. Uh, public comment on 1430. <laughs> The municipal school budget. This is the bond. This is the bond. I meant bond, rather. Sorry, bond. Long day. <laughs> <laughs> Any public comment? Seeing none? Any approval? Second. Any discussion? Councilor Holbrook. Um, just for maybe the benefit of people listening. Uh, these aren't new items, but these were items that were approved in our previous year's budget. This is just the point in time where we are bonding them. So we're actually physically going for the loan. So mm -hmm. these aren't any new items, I should say, above and beyond our already budget. And this is the uh, this is the authorization to fund it. Right. They've been previously approved, mm -hmm. and now right. we're mm -hmm. going to fund it through the bond itself. Yeah. Councilor Benedict. Since we have not agreed in any way, shape, or form on the budget, why do we need to put a bond in place? It's last year. This is last year. Prior years. Hmm? Last year. Last Prior year. Prior years. Request. Capital. Municipal capital improvements. Prior fiscal year. So th these have all been approved through a previous budget approval. Uh, oh. Some of them date uh, back quite a bit um, using some of the land bond funds. And this simply approves the uh, method of financing, which is borrowing. Do we have power? Anyone else? Seeing none, I uh, call for the roll call vote. Council, Council Holbrook? Yes. Council Dunham? Yes. Councilor Dunham? Yes. Councilor St. Clair? Yes. Councilor Blaze? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. Thank you. Order 1433 is back to approve the appointment of Robert Baisley to the Historic Preservation Committee. Okay. Um, so moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Under new business order number 1434 is the first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed municipal school budget for fiscal year 2015. Shall I speak to it very quickly? Yes. Um, this is the, uh, the, the first consideration uh, <coughs> toward adoption of the fiscal year 15 budget. Uh, what's before you this evening contains uh, the document um, described in my in detail in my proposed budget, so we've not had the luxury of uh, council uh, to have any input at this point, and it is customary and historic um, to, in fact, adopt the proposed budget in first reading to initiate the adoption process. Um, it, it goes without saying, and I encourage councilors to speak on this themselves for sure, uh, I do expect changes to be made uh, as the review process uh, goes through and, and uh, councillors are in a position to make, propose specific amendments to the budget. But uh, this does initiate the adoption process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anybody from the public like to speak on order 1434? Step right up. Name and address. Anyone? Seeing no one from the public? Motion. Move approval. Second. Council of Commons. Discussion. Council of Holbrook. Up is first bad guy. Yes. <laughs> um so as as you I'm sure many of you already know and we've already discussed a little bit beforehand, um certainly our budget is a bit high. Um 
and, and I do strongly encourage every counselor to, you know, please do speak very clearly what your thoughts and what your intentions are for the, for the budget this year. Um, as you know, the, um, the proposal for the municipal side, we were um, not flat this year. I know we've been flat in municipal spending for five years, but um, there are some proposed positions within the budget and some fixed costs like fuel and those sorts of lines, so there is a slight increase this year. Um, so again, if you have um, anything as far as um, that the council does have line item authority over, if there's something that you have as a concern or whatnot, to please do you know speak clearly about that. Um, as far as the other side, um, for the school side certainly, um, you know, the council does not have that line item authority. It, it is only the bottom dollar authority. So again, um, I would hope and encourage you to speak very clearly what, what your intentions and, and what your wants are for this year. Um, I, I will say clearly um, what was presented to us was not uh, representative of the request to try to bring in and rein in spending on the, on the school side this year. Um, but certainly this is early in the process for them as well. They have a finance committee as well that does have line item authority. So I do hope and look forward to that they will come forward um, with a series of recommendations of their own rather than a blind bottom line cut from us. But um, again, I, I strongly encourage all of you to say where you are so that we're all clear of how to move forward from this. The only clear message we have is 10% increase over last year's not acceptable. Well, there has to be what is. So um, the good news is on the school side, they did have um, 700,000 left last year. And the good news is we get 600,000 in school revenue sharing that we didn't have last year. So there are some positives there. There's no bad news this year, which is nice. but. Um, I'll support it in my first reading just because that's kind of the due process, but I, I do expect there will be amendments coming forward for the second reading. So um, that's it for me. Thank you, Councilor Holbrook. Council. Anyone else? I, I just like to say, I just like to say that uh, I'm in favor of passing it just to keep the process going, but. Uh, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, we as a council set in place a goal to have a flat line budget this year, no increases in taxes, um, and we've got to work towards that. Okay. Council Benedict. <coughs> well, to, to, to quote uh, last year's chairman, Ron Alquist, My hands are on my nose. <laughs> it stinks. The school side of this, it doesn't seem to amaze me because we went through this last year. We told them the goal we had, and then I looked at it as let the games begin. Let's go get Dave Ortiz and hit it out of the park and see what flies. Or a real, more realistic attitude is throw it against the wall and see what sticks. We've made it very clear what is needed from the school side for the budget. And basically they have to make it work. Unfortunately, we have no authority with line items. I did not like what was done last year, that they turned around and prayed on the children and on the parents, sending out letters from teachers and principals and this and that. Oh, we're going to have this cut, we're going to have that cut, we're going to have the other thing cut. <clears throat> They're the ones that cut it. It doesn't get cut here, and I, I, I understood that they, they addressed everything but their own personal paychecks. A lot of people are taking less money 
or even money from the year before. There wasn't one comment about that except, oh, we got a union. Well, okay, straighten the union out. Uh, I, I don't like them coming at us with a ridiculous number and turn it into a volleyball game, a give and take of this, that, and the other thing. It doesn't have to be that way, I don't think. Uh, and I'm very annoyed with the way that they started off, and then we've got to play this game again. I don't think it's right. That's all i got to say for now. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Council Sinclair. Um, I just wanted to say that I also was not happy with um, what came forward from the school. Um, I'm the school board liaison, so um, it's no secret. I have kids in the school system. Um, I love the Scarborough school systems. We've had incredible experience with them. Um, so I do consider myself a supporter of them. Um, but I was really disappointed by what came forward, and I almost felt insulted by it um, because we asked for something that they didn't even come close to. So it almost made me feel like they they didn't care. Doesn't matter what we say. Doesn't matter what the people say. We're just gonna load up everything we need and throw it at you. Um, and that frustrates me. Uh, I know they have a workshop coming up. I plan on attending that um, because I do think it's, you know, the more information you have, the better you can make a decision. But I can very adamantly say I will not support something like that. I think it's not going to happen. We can't, we can't keep the taxes, we just, we can't. So. Councilor Caterina. Well, you think I have an opinion on this? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, people who know me, I'm a, I'm a former educator. I've frequently come to council and school board meetings and complained about budgets that they weren't high enough or, or you know, we needed this or that for schools because I, I'm a bit, I'm a huge supporter of public schools. Um, that being said, I, I'm feeling like it has been spoken here because I, I know I, uh, Councilor Donovan and I, when we were first elected, had a meeting with the superintendent um, not long after we had our council meeting talking about how we want to keep our tax rate flat or as flat as we possibly can and within and being realistic. Um, and um, it's just frustrating to, to get a budget that not only was 10% higher than last year, but I'm real familiar with budgets and public budgeting and how to read budgets from uh, some of my past experiences in life. And I don't know, that budget wasn't really clear. And I, I look forward to the process. Uh, I mean, I want to hear more, but I do. I mean, my initial reaction was, you know, hand me the budget. The school teacher and me wanted to hand it right back with my red marks on it and say, here, go back and rewrite this because it doesn't meet, you know, it's getting an F right now. So um, that's my opinion. Councilor Donovan. Uh, I, like uh, Jean Marie, uh, have a strong public school support outlook and background. I was on a school board uh, uh, in the town I used to live in. Uh, uh, so uh, I think I uh, I couldn't feel more strongly about public school education. I think it's one of the things that makes our society special. Uh, so uh, I will always be a big supporter of public schools. I don't support this budget proposal, and I will vote to move it on to, because mm -hmm. that's that's the way things go. Is we're voting to have a public hearing on this, and there's a lot of work uh, that remains to be done between now and the end of the process. Uh, I share the views expressed around the table today. <clears throat> we need to uh, shoot for a flat budget, and, and that remains uh, a goal. And I don't think it diminishes just because we have a budget that asks for 
over 10 percent. So, thank, thank you. you. Well, I'll just my comments are is you know um, items um, orders like this are um, at this point of discussions between counselors, um, not so much with the public. So to my fellow counselors, I'd like to say that I remember last year's budget um, negotiations, uh, last year's comments um, from parents that came here, <coughs> and I find that, it, it, you know, we, we were told that they, that they desperately needed this money. Um, it was, you know, um, hard, hard case, uh, and they needed it. And then we turn around and find out they put seven hundred thousand plus in their rainy day fund. I feel that that money should have been as a tax rebate to the taxpayers of Scarborough, not going into a rainy day fund. So I'm going to be keeping that in the back of my mind this year. Because that burnt my, you know what, last year. I didn't think it was right at all to do something like that. After what we sat here and went through, listening to comments from a lot of different people that I know out there in public that were almost, I felt, after I mentioned to them what had happened, I said, do you feel like you were told the truth now? Anyone else? All right. Um, as far as uh, moving this forward, um, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? None? Oh, Council of Benedict. Protest vote. I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ordinance 1435 is the first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 604 of the Animal Control Ordinance. Okay. Members of the public. Three minutes. Name and address. Hello, my name is Julie Hannon, 14 Mass Road. I will say very plainly, I do not believe this ordinance is necessary. The change in the ordinance is necessary, and I think that you you ought to um, abide by what was uh, came of the referendum vote. I think you've wasted a lot of your own time, a lot of our time, a lot of money uh, changing a uh, ordinance that simply needed to be enforced. I had wished that you had spent more time investigating uh, the legal ramifications of all the actions that took place, but it didn't happen. And unfortunately, um, everything that I have sent to you appears to me to have been ignored. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Seth Fernald, uh, Maple Avenue. If it's been deemed that a change needs to be made from the one plover in the last 30 years, uh, looking through this ordinance, I, you know, I probably agree with it, other than A and C. C would be no dogs off leash 11 to 2 all through the winter time. 11 to 2 in the winter time is pretty much the daylight time. Uh, taking that away, the only time when someone would be able to walk their dog when it's negative 20, a little bit of sun comes out, off leash, it just didn't seem to be a need for. I'm, I'm still confused as to why we're going around the, seat, around the clock. Uh, situation. Three months ago, I, I don't think the townspeople were up in arms saying we need to restrict the dogs in the winter. I, I don't know if that was an item that was coming up all the time. If there was public comment about that, I don't know. Leaving it in here again, I don't know why we're doing that. There might be a small percentage of people who don't like dogs. I understand there's plenty of beaches and areas where they're not allowed to be. Uh, then that's C. A speaks again to the restricted areas. Uh, the resolution, the restricted areas. The uh, the idea of the resolution, that resolution wasn't encouraged by the dogs or other dog <coughs> people. I mean, a small part of that was saying if we have restricted areas and we're guaranteed off leash time out of those restricted areas, then that's something we can work with. To say that that was our idea and the, the genesis idea came from us, and then to completely bastardize it and to take the very potential, take all that 
the one compromise we had in there was to have this non-protected area to have dogs off leash in that area. And the, the biggest part of that, the resolution is the ability to really easily take that area away, to take our compromise away and to say, hey, that's your idea, don't you love it? That's either disingenuous <coughs> or a flat out lie. And it's just, it's very discouraging that someone would stand up there and say, this is your idea, why don't you like it? Thank you. Thank you. Um, to preface my comments, uh, I think we should stick with the old ordinance and enforce it. However, um, to address what's been presented to us, uh, two small things. Um, site control. Uh, have you checked the ADA? Uh, can people who are sight impaired not let their dogs run loose on Scarborough Beach? Um, and the requirements when you license your dog, um, you have to affirm that you'll be a responsible citizen. Um, what about the people who license online? Are you going to do a whole separate mailing to them? Or, you know, I mean, how is that even going to work? And does the state allow that, those kinds of additions to their system or not? I mean, have, uh, have you looked into that? <laughs> Uh, it seems like a little bit of an overkill. But my f uh, least favorite aspect of this whole thing is what uh, Seth referred to, and I just realized I didn't say my name again, sorry, Catherine Rogers Gorham Road, um, is, uh, as I've uh, talked, uh, emailed with Jean Marie and Councillor Benedict, thank you for conversing with me about this, um, the off-leash restrictions in the off season, which is um, uh, basically seven months of the year, are completely unnecessary. Um, the proposed spring and summer rules have the potential, uh, the way the current uh, proposal is written, have the potential to take away a huge amount of off leash time already, possibly five entire months of the year if we have wandering clovers all over the place. So taking away the three prime hours in the middle, I apologize, in the middle, taking away three prime hours in the middle of the day on every beach, every day in the off season for the remaining seven months is unfair. Um, during the off season, the beach is practically deserted. There have been many times when I've been there when maybe there were maybe three people um, almost everyone who is there has a dog with them, and most of the dogs are off leash. Um, the additional restrictions, in addition to the proposed ordinance and resolution um, that you are considering are overkill, have nothing to do with clover protection, <coughs> and um, uh, totally inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Max? Hi, Liam Summers, Holmes Road. Um, with regard to the ordinance um, that you're proposing, the, the, the most effective laws, rules, are the ones that are simple and easy to understand. That's where you get your most compliance out of it, and it's the best way to enforce them. Um, the ordinance that you are proposing and that you're considering now has a lot of very convoluted and uh, language in there that can be interpreted many different ways. It also in, uh, vests power uh, on those who might not be the most appropriate person to have that. So in other words, who is the person that's going to tell us when a chick has been wandering? And how does that go? And so the plover coordinator ostensibly <laughs> might be that person. But is that plover coordinator uh, somebody from U.S. Fish and Wildlife? Do they have re responsibilities there? Is it from Audubon? Are we taking reports from Audubon? Hey, there's a chick over there. And then all of a sudden, beaches start becoming uh, closed based on that kind of criteria. You also have a, a tremendous amount of people that are going to be coming into Scarborough, and, and we have a large uh, tax base that is uh, benefiting of this. They're from out of state, out of town. They're not going to know these rules inherently. And, and quite honestly, I lived here for two years and, and it took me that long to figure out the old ordinance and that's reasonably simple. 
This is, you, you don't have the kind of signage that you'd need to make this ordinance clear. I don't know if you're going to put up a red flag like they do when there's a tidal wave or whatever. Red flag says it's a plover time, and green flag says it's go, and we'll, I, I don't know what system you, you envision that would be able to, to clearly communicate to anybody going to the beach what their rights are, what the rules are for that day, whether the town manager has imposed a state of emergency because of a plover situation, or whether or not the plover coordinator has designated that beach to be closed outside of the restricted area. What I would say is you had an ordinance that was just lacking in follow through. It wasn't lacking in comprehensive scope. We didn't enforce it, and that was the missing piece. And so I would urge you to go back to simplicity because that's what's going to get you the greatest amount of compliance. This uh, adding more language to things doesn't make it better sometimes. Sometimes it makes it worse. Uh, so I would ask you to look at what you're putting in front of people and say, can I understand that? Would I reasonably be able to understand that? Is it enforceable? And how, if we couldn't enforce the simple ordinance, are we going to enforce one that now has tentacles all over the place? Uh, you're setting yourself up for failure, and you're also setting it up so that we can't comply with it. And I don't want to live in a town where I can't comply with the rules. That's not what I am here to do. I don't want to break the rules every time I step outside my house because I don't know which way the flag is flying that day. So keep it simple, make it enforceable, and then enforce it, and that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane. Um, Liam, hold on to your chair because we agree. So uh, no fighting <laughs> over the next few days. That might be nice. Um, I really liked what he said. I also want to thank Seth Fernald for articulating what I couldn't say earlier. Um, being on this animal ad hoc committee, and, I, and, I, and I've had my share of trauma and <sighs> difficult experiences in this world. Um, I grew up with club feet. I've had 14 operations. I lost a brother. I lost a father. I've lost best friends. I've been through a lot of different things that have caused me to be somewhat of a resilient person. And I would tell you, from the very depth of my heart, and I mean this, that being on this ad hoc committee was the most difficult thing I have ever done in my entire life. Someone mentioned earlier the stalking, accusations, all of that. Not who I am. Never happened from me. Never. Okay? So when you use my words against me, it, when I was giving my honest effort in negotiation, and I gave up, I voted for the winter hours. Do I think we needed winter hours? I haven't seen the emails that you supposedly have. I don't necessarily think we do, but that's what negotiation is. That's what compromise is. You give up things to achieve another thing, to come to a compromise, to achieve a balance, so that we can avoid a referendum. That's not what this town needs. Please don't turn my good efforts and my good faith efforts, and I worked very hard uh, against me and use my words against me, especially if you're not willing to have a conversation with me. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, uh, Suzanne Foley, Ferguson 3, 31 Black Point Road. Um, I just want to make a clarification about the maps. Pe I think everybody really likes the maps and the aerials. They just don't like them in a resolution. They want them in an ordinance. We have numerous maps and ordinances. We have every contract zone comes with or maps and ordinances. And all the zoning, we can deal with maps in an ordinance. It's been done before. It's not. It, and so thank you, Mr. Blaze, for suggesting that the entire protection areas could be placed. I think that will make everybody a lot more comfortable. I wish we could just put away our egos here. Um, why are we? <laughs> Because if we did and we said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Why are we trying to fix something that isn't broke? Oh, well, it's the U.S. Fish. Forget it. We need a paint job. We need enforcement. We need education. We don't need a fix. But we got egos now. We did so much work. We can't stop now. We can't stop the train. Now, it's my understanding that the proposal of the protected areas that was presented at the ad hoc, they were presented. But in the spirit of compromise, with the very important caveat that was just mentioned, the non-protection areas would remain as the current ordinance. The definition of move, which is in your thing, 
where a bird moving is changing location, traveling, proceeding, shifting in position. That's moving. Okay, they're going to move every day, and they're going to cross the line. That means the beaches are closed. That's what this is doing. Migrate means move from one region or another or to settle to another habitat. You guys have to definitely get those straight. That has to do with leaving the beach for the, for the year, going down south. Movement can be temporary or permanent. A permanent movement is when a nest is re-nested in a new location. Definite different things. I think these people, if a permanent movement happened, I think people would be happy. Let's protect the birds. We want to protect the birds. This is, again, we want to protect the birds as well. Specifically on the ordinance, just to go page by page, page one, um, in the evenings, people bring their dogs to the beach, and I've seen them swim with leashes. This is a 12-foot leash. If you have a, a dog that's five foot, how is a, a dog going to swim on a 12-foot leash? Um, it's not going to happen because the tides go in eight, about eight. You'd be totally soaking wet. You have to go swimming with them. So you're cutting out all swimming in the evenings, um, even in the off-season, if you do this. Now, if you make the changes for the plovers, you could do it just in the summer. So that's just something to consider. Um, and then on page uh, page 5, uh, 60413, no dog shall be kept within the limits of the town of Scarborough. This does not address out-of-town dog owners or renters, and I thought it was the intent of the council to enable the animal control officer to approach them and say, hey, listen, uh, you've got to go in and learn about responsible dog ownership, blah, da 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 So I think the wording should probably be changed from no dog shall be kept to no dog shall be on public property. That's page five. And then the last page, 60415, uh, you didn't make any changes, violations and penalties. And I see two important changes that could be made. One, um, I think it should state specifically what you should, what the fines are for first offense, second offense, third offense, instead of just say not less than 50 and not more than 100, because that's pretty vague. Um, and then also number two is that warnings should be recorded. There's been zero, date, the animal control officer recorded zero complaints between 6 and 9 a.m. Well, actually, they didn't have the time, so we don't really know. But between 6 and 9 a.m., they don't work. So um, during that measly three-hour period of off-leash, there were no complaints. If we go through this again, we need the data. There's no data. So. The, that's the time's gone over a minute now, over your time. <laughs> hey, um, okay, I'm done. That what, was no, why don't you uh, email those, what you had uh, those, that, those to, ones to us. Okay. You know, whatever you have for suggestions, or I can and we'll you. look at them. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name's Anne Hammond. I live at Piper Shores. I said before how much um, I enjoy going to the beach with my dog. Um, being a senior citizen, I'm not terribly keen on going uh, in the very cold weather, early in the morning and late at night, I would like to just be able to go to the beach without all these restrictions. I'm truly concerned, because I was here uh, earlier and spoke here earlier. I'm very sad to, to know that the vote, as far as I can tell, was not honored. Everybody that I spoke to and around the town and place where I live, everybody thinks it's over. Meanwhile, there's been the struggling going on and people getting more and more upset, more money being spent. I do think the people who I've spoken to, let's keep it simple, are the people that you should be listening to. I think you're making things so complicated and uh, losing people's respect and uh, making life difficult, not only for yourselves, but certainly for your community. I have lived other places, lived all over the world, and I've never heard so much noise made about so little. And I do think that the people that have worked hard here 
and I'm amazed at how much people care, how much there's this enormous passion, uh, that there's been the ad hoc committee, and people have considered one thing and another. But I've lived in places where this was not, you know, this was not a problem. They put up the notices, they put up the, the snow fence, they weren't so worried about the dogs as they were also worried about the people. And one of the things that really concerns me here is you keep on focusing on the dogs, dogs, dogs. You should be just as worried about the people. I mean, we don't put up notices in, in the Hamptons about no dogs should cross here. We say nobody should pass this point because there's going to be, this is going to be a protected area. It's a protected area. People come down the beach. There's a notice way back here. Nobody goes past it. It, everybody knows how to behave. Um, so I, no, I would suggest very much that, um, that you listen certainly to the people who have spoken here. But really what I think is so sad is that this has made people depressed. This has made people angry. This, is, this has got people so roiled up. that um, And we're all put in the same box. Now you can certainly see that I have a service dog. You have seen my dog behave absolutely perfectly this evening. I bought her on purpose. I'm going to be one of the people that is caught up in the fact that some people don't train their dogs. Some people don't train their children. Mm -hmm. You know, and unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work that way. So I think that we need to be very, very careful here. And I do think all these resolutions and all this wording and all this uh, uh, attempt to control is going to go exactly the opposite way. I think you're spending an enormous amount of money. And you're going to have to change all the notices. And I would request again to go back to the original audience. It's obviously worked for 30 years. I think it should be people that are, are there making sure that they, these ordinances are met. But how are, you person, how are you going to control somebody coming in from the outside during the summer? They're not going to know. I mean, most people here who don't come to these meetings haven't a clue what you're even talking about. So how does anybody coming in from the outside, are they going to say, oh no, oh, a, no, we can't go on the beach today because the plover has moved five yards. Please be very careful about what you decide. Um, it's one of my aspects of being here is the sense of freedom. I love to see dogs running free on the beach. And one of our major poets has just come out with a book, a beautiful book that's called Dog Songs. Her very last poem is all about the beauty of watching dogs running free. And it's not, a, it's not wonderful for a dog to be leashed. I personally have uh, knee problems. I had two knee replacements. What's made it possible for me to exercise my dog is that it's trained. When I call it, it comes. If I ask the dog to die down, it lies down. It's very hard for me to walk a dog on leash, as it is for many seniors. Seniors can't necessarily exercise their dogs. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Robert Bovner, Fort King Street. Um, I don't understand how some of this language that's been written into the ordinance that you folks are going to consider got there when it wasn't mentioned at the ad hoc committee. Um, and I'm specifically talking about uh, one thing sticks out in my mind and having read it regarding um, kite flying. There was a discussion at the ad hoc uh, about something about 200 feet if there was a nest scene. That was the only discussion about any sort of feet away from something. Now in this ordinance, if a blower moves left, right, indifferent, up, down, it could be 350 feet you have to stay away. Or if it goes further, it might be 100, 650 feet away. That's two and a half football fields. I mean, this is out, out, just outrageous. I, I just don't get it. That means that you folks, whoever wrote this, and I can only assume that I know the two people who wrote it, whoever wrote this, after the ad hoc meeting was over, <laughs> decided that they should go back and read the primer from Audubon and let's get this stuff in. If what you wanted was Audubon, you got it. You didn't need to wait all this time. This is a disgrace on what you're perpetrating on the public. I'm sick of it. Thank you.
Joanne LeBlanc, 10 Dover Street. I have just one question. There's a line in the proposed ordinance that says no dogs on the, on the beach from dawn to dusk. I'm assuming that's a, an error. Typo. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the uh, <coughs> public comment on order 1435. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion? Oh. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. Everybody's getting sleepy here. Just if I could, for the council's yes. benefit, no liberties, no uh, presumptions were made beyond what the report um, offered in, in the council through its workshop gave at least consensus approval to. Um, absolutely no liberties were taken beyond uh, the confines of those concepts that were approved through that process. I just want to assure the council of that. Okay. Um, comments, discussion. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Mr. Chairman, uh, we've had a series of uh, uh, motions to amend sections so as to provide better clarification. <clears throat> and if uh, it's uh, appropriate at this time, I'll uh, make the first of those motions to amend. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the first one is an effort to clarify that a leash uh, uh, must be carried at all times that a dog uh, is off leash. <clears throat> and the motion to amend the main motion uh, is to section 604-2, which is the definition section, <clears throat> section 12, uh, uh, responsible party uh, uh, definition by adding the following sentence. A responsible party shall have a leash in his or her possession for each dog off leash. Okay. One by one, or um, <coughs> would you like to do them? I can. This is all the chapter 604. Yeah. I can go through all of them if, if yes. that's the pleasure of the council, because they're all pretty simple and they're pretty straightforward and they're intended to clarify things. Yes, so. go ahead. <clears throat> motion to amend the main motion uh, uh, as amended to section uh, to amend section 604-2 definition uh, numbers 9, uh, which is the lease section, 11, which is the responsible dog owner section, and section 12, the responsible party definition by adding a sentence following the end of each of those definitions that states, uh, a failure to comply with this definition shall constitute a violation of this ordinance. And the purpose of the uh, uh, amendments <clears throat> is to make it clear that since these are in the, the definition section, but yet there are standards that you have to comply with, it, it was deemed appropriate to include a reference to the fact that non-compliance with a term contained in the definition constituted a violation of the ordinance. The next one is uh, uh, to add a new term to the ordinance because we uh, uh, introduced the concept of protected areas uh, and this would be a motion to amend the main motion <clears throat> to amend section 604-2 uh, definition section by adding uh, the following definition. Protected areas. Areas that may be designated for special protection for piping plovers or other endangered species based upon scientific and historical data. The uh, uh, a woman who just spoke at the podium uh, raised the last motion to amend the main motion, which is to section 60410, uh, uh, subsection E, which was a clerical error, it should have read, no dogs on any beach from dusk to dawn. Thank you. A second. There's in the form of motion, correct? Yes. Okay. On the amendment, <clears throat> discussion. Comments, discussion. Anyone down this way? Councilor St. Clair. I'd like to make a motion to table it 
please? Um, the amend no, we, we oh. have to stay on the, on the, amendment. the amendment. Oh, first. sorry, my, my mistake. Then on the main motion. Right. So back to any discussion or comments <coughs> on the main on the amendment to the main motion. Uh, Councilor Bennett. I just have a question for clarity. <coughs> the third item, Councilor Donovan brought up the new term protected area. Could you take that a little further? I'm a little confused. Pardon, say that again? The he third one that you brought up was adding a new term of protected area. Yeah, and I think the, the, the perception was that we were introducing both in a resolution and in uh, uh, section 60410 uh, the term protected area. And so uh, it was felt as if, for clarity purposes, we should recognize that it's a new term that's being introduced into the ordinance, and therefore it should have a definition. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, on the amendment, all those in favor? Opposed? One. Thanks for the same Okay, back to the main motion with the amendments. Discussion. Uh, um, along with uh, everything else that we've been working on, I would suggest tabling it until. I, or do we want to? I think you want to. Have discussion first. Yeah, you're right. right. Because yeah, it's no, not. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Could you withdraw that? Yeah, I'm withdrawing. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Let's. Um, all right. We got um, Council Holbrook. Go me. Okay. Um, I had a couple quick things, but I'm trying to reread because you just fixed some of them. Um, there was one other thing, just kind of a clerical <coughs> point, if you will. Um, Within the animal control, you have 604-12. Um, it is one giant run-on sentence. <laughs> that is what I would say. You need some comments. <laughs> Point that out to you. Um, and maybe a period or two. Um, I'll, I'll let you all fix that later. Thank you. Um, but I did want to point out um, something that... I've heard repeatedly it has to do with the beach hours, which I know um, my first go around when we had our workshop, I, I liked the off season beach hours. I, that was something I, you know, from the public recurring theme, you know, people that are afraid or people that would like to have some time in the off season, um, people that maybe don't go because they're too afraid, um, but along those lines. Um, but after hearing some of the feedback about it, I, I did think. I, my, my preference would be to maybe swap around the winter hours a little bit. There's a lot of validity to the point of in the off season, the shorter hours, you know, it's dark at 3 o'clock. I, I, you know, the more I, I, I dwelled upon it, I, the way it's written now, I think it's from <coughs> 10 to 12. Um, I'm certainly open to ideas from other counselors. I, I don't have a preference either way if we split it maybe, you know, where it's 10 to 12, or 11 to 1, or 12 to 2, or but but to break it up a little bit so that it's not crunching that nicer part of the day at noontime, yes, is the warmer part of the day. So mm -hmm. um, so I would support that, crunching that time. That still allows a good two-hour block for folks that don't want to be maybe in fear or duress of having a dog on the beach approach them or whatnot. Um, so it would still allow for that, but shrink it down a little bit. Um, my thought from some of you are is that there's maybe some consensus to table to one meeting, so I'd be happy to maybe see that come forward as an amendment later. I'm not worried about mm -hmm. making it right now. Um, my other question that I just want to put out is um, dogs at large. The one thing I noticed is, is there was some talk, of, um, and it was included, that there was, I'm trying to what technology? I do miss paper. <laughs> uh, 
604-4 at large, um, although it was added for um, dogs shall be considered at large unless leashed or under voice control, voice and sight control. Um, I, I still stand by the fact that you need that clean definition of the point that the dog's no longer within sight or within mm -hmm. that voice, you know, capable of voice control. Um, again, you know, maybe just for the sake of, you know, for the next time it comes around, I'm happy to offer it as amendment. I, you know, I've thrown around a couple of ideas. I, I don't have a good answer. I would appreciate some input from somebody who knows maybe a little more from a dog perspective. At what point the dog doesn't hear you anymore? So mm -hmm. is that 100 yards? Is it 100 feet? Is it a whatever. So just, again, just for clarity for people so they have an idea, you know, if they're a quarter of a mile away, maybe they can't hear you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that, those parts of it aside, um, this, this is a package as the total, total thing going on where, where I'm at. Um, and I, and I still stand behind what I said, which is, it's a compromise. Do I absolutely love it? No, but it is a compromise. It, it's certainly a lot closer to, to what we were getting for feedback from folks um, from the ad hoc point and the ad hoc committee's <laughs> recommendations. Um, I, I never look at an ordinance as being the final line. You, you know, I, I, I see this as it will be a learning experience no matter what, whether you take this piece out or change that part of it. Whatever comes through this summer will be the learning curve with it. Um, I'm comfortable allowing it to move forward and see how it works and then revisiting it. If it's not working, we pull it back out. It's not, or, you know, we don't institute a certain piece of it, which is maybe the TAG program. That still has a lot to come. Maybe our experience over the summer is what we have is great, and I'm okay with that. I will say, again, um, as far as supporting on the tabling concept, um, which was a point raised that I, I hadn't, I don't have an answer to, and I don't know that we have an answer to yet. Um, how do we demonstrate to people when that free area is available, mm -hmm. and, and how is somebody, is that going to be like with the clam flats? Is there an 800 number you call that says the open beach areas are open, or you know that piece of it? I, I, I haven't heard that in our discussions coming along. So I mean, it's certainly a valid. How 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 is somebody to reasonably know if it's open? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it is a flag system. Maybe it is a, a hotline number. Um, I've seen that in other areas where you the sign that's posted says please call 1-800 to get the information. So. Again, I think maybe one. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Nobody wants to hear this. Maybe one more meeting, just to, those finer last few details. I, I know people don't want to have to come back to it again, but um, but I, I mean, it, it's certainly a valid. Yeah, how, how does somebody know? Um, so uh, I'm trying to think. There was one other thing I wanted to. It is first reading, so again, if we the decisions to move it forward for you know we have a public hearing and we can make those changes in second reading, I'm I'm okay with that too. Um, and then the last, I wrote too many notes. I'm sorry, <laughs> as people were going along. Um, I just wanted to. Well, if somebody else wants to talk, I'll come back to it if I find my other. <laughs> Yeah, well, <clears throat> I'll just make a comment just for a second here. Um, Council St. Clair had to leave the meeting. She already informed me before the meeting she had to go to relieve her babysitter. So she only had so so much time here tonight. Um, I will say <clears throat> my intent um, was that this would be the first reading. Yep. We have a public hearing. And then this went to the um, May 7th meeting so that everything was voted on at the May 7th meeting. So I don't know if that um, um, changes anybody's mind on tabling this and you're going to table it to what? Um, I still think, you know, we need that, to have that public hearing um, the 16th. Okay, so now. With that being said, Council of Ways. Oh, sorry, Council of Benedict. Long day. <laughs> ah, yes, yeah. it is. 
the reason that I, that I would like to see this go through the first reading is it's not an acceptance, mm. it's not a refusal, it's simply you were here, you heard it. You don't have to swallow it, you don't have to regurgitate it. It just, as part of the process, it keeps things moving. Changes can be made qu quite a bit from now on, especially at the public hearing. We can we can hear what is said and make our changes then. Mm -hmm. But I I honestly feel that it's, it should be passed <coughs> at this time. Mm -hmm. Council Blaze, I agree. Okay. Councilor Katarina. Um, please take my tabling suggestion as a neophyte to this whole process. <laughs> so I would agree with everyone that just keep this moving forward through the reading process. Okay, this, it's yeah. not, you know, I mean, it's not no, no, be I wham, bam, done. No, 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 I know. It's, you know, like I said, <clears throat> it's until the 7th. But I do have a couple, just a couple of things. Um, I, I mean, I would... Jessica basically uh, hit on most of them. I was interested in uh, the comments one of the speakers made about uh, ADA um, and making sure that whatever we work with, because people do have service dogs and you do mm -hmm. have, you know, some issues with that, make sure it, it meets whatever those regulations are. And about the, uh, the, if we did go to a tag system, and I know this is down the line, it's something that's going to be held by the ad hoc committee, but I did think it was an interesting comment about, you know, if people do license online. I don't have dogs, so I'm not sure what happens when you have to mm -hmm. license them and whatever. I didn't realize you could license online, so that was just an interesting uh, comment. Um, and yeah, it'd be great if we could have a simple rule. I remember way back when, well, it seems like way back when, back in... September or whatever, I, at that point I wasn't on the council, but I believe the council was talking about leashing, of just doing leashing during plover season, and people didn't seem to like that, and that seemed pretty simple, but anyway, so here we are, um, and doing the best we can do, so that's it. Okay. Councilor Donovan. I'll talk to the 11 to 2 provision, and most of the provisions as you go through them uh, are, aren't particularly uh, critical, critical issues. I mean, you, you look at the responsible dog owner uh, definition and the re responsibilities that that carries with it. That was a unanimous vote in the uh, ad hoc committee to have that sort of mm -hmm. responsibility contract for, for people to realize that they had. The site control edition is, is really uh, largely uh, just sort of makes sense. If you're going to have site control, uh, then you ought to have a definition for it, and that's straightforward. Uh, the at-large dogs provision, I thought, was, was straightforward. Uh, the uh, 11 to 2 provision was unanimous at the ad hoc committee. All seven members of the ad hoc committee voted for 11 to 2. <clears throat> and we spent some time talking about that. <clears throat> and part of the problem is we didn't want to have multiple periods of time. The thing was complicated enough as it is <clears throat> to now have another set of times. And you hear people say, well, I was out on the beach in the middle of January and there was no one there. Well, that's true. But go to these beaches in September and they're mobbed. And 11 to 2, that's real beach time. September, October, November, there's people out there with blankets and beach chairs and having a good time. And just like we have in the summer when we have no dogs from 9 to 5, this was deemed to be a reasonable restriction. 11 to 2 uh, during the kind of September, October, November uh, uh, and rather than break it up into another season of December, January, February, which is the darkest three months of the year, we didn't. Uh, so uh, that was kind of uh, how we got to where we got to, and it had broad support. Uh, uh, people want some time uh, when dogs are not, uh, not off-leash. Uh, lots of people with little dogs. 
uh, uh, lots of people who are older. So we got a lot of input on that, and therefore we were trying to meet a demand of the community. And I guess the goal was to represent everybody. Uh, so I thought it got pretty broad support in the uh, uh, ad hoc committee, and to me that was pretty indicative of the reasonableness of, the, of that proposal. So I'll leave it there. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Holbrook, did you remember what you wanted to say? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be fresh. Maybe two hours ago I did. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'll just leave with the comment of, you know, I I again, I know it's not the original ordinance, and I, and I think it's not the ad hoc recommendation. I, I do think it is that, that middle ground. It's not as black and white as, as I would have liked it. it. It does leave a bit of shade of gray, but in the same token, to get a document that we as a council can agree to pass is the million dollar thing. Um, you know, I could have very easily just stuck my nose and my, you know, in the air and dug my feet in the sand and said no and been outvoted and the ad hoc resolution would have passed. So right. there was right. some give for me, there was some take from others. Um, you know, like I said, it, it's not quite as black and white as I would have liked. It does leave a little gray, but it does preserve dog presence. Although it may be leashed in some of those spots, it preserves the dog presence on the beach, yeah. um, with the exception of two areas that have classically never had that dog presence. Um, and it does have a majority of the summer months will most likely stay open some off-leash times. Um, there may be a three, four weeks of a gray area where it might, like I said, you might have to call something or you might have to look for a flag to find out if you can be there or not off-leash. But um, I did have, um, I did remember finally my question. <laughs> so that, that's right. It's a little more twe tweaking, a little more, more words for thing, but, but like I said, it's, I think the best that we're going to come to as a council for a compromise proposal. Whatever happens from here will, will happen, but it's the best we can do. Um, I remember my question. Dog swimming in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Now, can I, and, and unless somebody can answer that for me, can we have an answer to that for the next meeting um, where they're not physically on the beach, they're in the water? I, I kind of assume they always would be able to swim, but um, I, I'm not... I, I don't have the answer to that, so I assumed, should never assume. Um, so if we can have an answer for that the next time this comes, mm -hmm. I, if that move, <coughs> my intent would be to, mm -hmm. yes, that folks can, you know, Bring their dogs it. not on the beach at that point, they're in the water, so mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Um, right, I wanted that a while ago myself. Yeah, me too. Um, because me too. if the dog is able to be on the voice command, um, and the dog goes swimming in the water, and then after it's done swimming, comes right back and goes on the leash. Keep your feet I don't, in the water, then you're not. I don't see a problem. <laughs> yeah. Keep your feet in the water. Keep a toe in the water. Uh, and I had put something in. I, I just, way when back. you finished, when did he I am. You are finished. Okay. I'm uh, Council Gettery. Um, I remember I, I think I put something in the ad hoc committee back, way back when, um, where I wondered about that. Is mm -hmm. there a way that even if the dogs have to be on leash, if we could have some way of you can have them off leash because they're in the water swimming? I, I don't know. So that, it, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. um, my, the, the one thing I, <clears throat> like you, Jessica, um, I was, you know, definitely for the the ad hoc committee. I was a definite no vote. I think I made that pretty clear to uh, everyone. Um, we sat through countless hours of uh, meeting with uh, talking to each other, trying to work through this, um, talking to uh, members of the public to try to work to a better compromise deal. Um, I thought we were pretty close um, to, you know, trying to come up with a, a good plan that was going to work, uh, you know, um, but um, <clears throat> I guess we'll have to, uh, <clears throat> I think we should continue on and um, see, see where it ends up in the end, and um, short of doing nothing is either like the comment that was made 
do nothing or try to um, come to a decent compromise. And I think that's what that was my true intent. And I I surely put a lot of um, effort, as others did, into um, trying to find that thread, <coughs> thread that needle and find the good compromise um, for the people of the town. That was the whole intent. I know um, Kate. I, the only thing I can say for Kate is Kate was right there trying to do the same thing, um, and uh, I can't speak for how she feels now. But anyone else, Councilor Benedict. On a lighter note, if there are any, at the beach, I think they did a good, the uh, ad hoc committee did a good job with it because it's. Pretty much the vote of the people with 75% and 25%. Can I ask you why you're shaking your head? No, no don't, uh, don't get, no. Council would talk to each other. Don't talk to the crowd. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. We've got a, a time situation that not everybody's going to be happy with as far as where the sun in the sky is. There's many days it'll make no difference except for those winter months. Especially this winter with the snow, it wouldn't make any difference with people going to the beach. I don't think anybody in their right mind would be going to the beach. But I just wanted to bring up that the three hours a day for the 28%, pretty much on the mark. Thank you. Council of Boys, anything? Um, well, along that same line, um, all through this whole process, ever since last, uh, the middle of last summer when this first came up, there was, <coughs> we have gotten emails and people have talked to us about being afraid to go onto the beach and when dogs are there. And I'll tell you honestly, I was on the beach with my grandson about three weeks ago in the middle of the day, and some dog came running right up to us and bumped right into him. He's three years old, looked around, and there wasn't a soul around. And it happens all the time. So I fully understand the need for a two- or three-hour block of time. Okay. Yeah, Council Holbrook, Donovan, Kalina, we're all set. Okay. <clears throat> Ready to vote. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Vote. Order number 1436 is the first reading and schedule of public hearing on the proposed amendments to 604A, the Horse Beach Permit Ordinance. Okay, uh, public comment on the horses on the beach. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this issue? Anyone? Okay. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Council discussion. Would you like to simply um, this this simple amendment uh, try attempts to align the time frames uh, in this for speech permit ordinance with uh, that which we're considering in the animal control ordinance <coughs> continuity. I would note, though, uh, really at the suggestion of the town clerk, huh. we did try to accommodate um, somewhat on that schedule. Um, help me out, Jody. Oh, uh, the previous regulation had. October 15th, and the suggestion is we, that we start that April, uh, August, October 1st, excuse me. So effectively, there'll be a 15-day difference, if you will, half a month. Um, but we believe this will better align and, and make for better enforceability. I should also note that the town clerk has been in touch with her counterpart in Old Orchard Beach uh, as we share a, this program and, and, frankly, need to have consistent regulations. Uh, and, uh, Tony, perhaps you could comment uh, what the initial reception of that 
suggestion was? It will be, if it's approved at the first reading tonight, it will be moved to, old, um, the recommendations will be moved on to Old Orchard, and it's my understanding that their council will also um, vote approval of changing the dates for the horse beach permit for the next season. Anyone? Councilor Holbrook? Good to go. That was my only question. Old Orchard was that following suit. Okay. So. That was my question, <laughs> yes. too. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? None. Order, no order number 1437 is the first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 610, the Piping Clover Ordinance. Okay. Uh, name? Uh, Liam Summers, Holmes Road. I, I, I need to address a couple of things Councillor Benedict just said with regard to this ordinance. Uh, and just to, just to clarify it so that there's an understanding of the use of the beach in the winter, because I think that's not proper. I, I have a place to run my dog at home, but I have three feet of snow in my backyard and I can't. The beach is the only place that doesn't have snow. That's why we go to the beach in the winter. So I just wanted to clarify that for you, sir, so you understood why the beach was important in the winter. I can't run my dog in my backyard. Unless I put yeah. snowshoes on her. The beach is free of snow, so I can't. Sir, Sorry, so I think thank you, sir. Over. Thank you for it's, uh, only, it's only free up no. to the high tide Jim, mark. Jim. Jim. Understood. I just wanted you to understand why thank we use you. it in the winter. Uh, with regard to the, the piping plover ordinance, um, I have to go back to the concept that this was ever about piping plovers uh, because what you are proposing has nothing to do with piping plovers. Uh, if you wanted to, and, and, and part of the reason that there was a compromise, compromise in the ad hoc committee, I believe, of saying make a protected area, fence it off, we'll use the rest, because that's what responsible people do. When plovers were on the beach and I had my dog, I went the other way. I, I grew up in Acadia National Park. When the falcons are on the trails, you use other trails. They don't close the whole park. And people <coughs> who are responsible abide by that. And so it was one of my suggestions that I emailed to you guys a long time ago was, fine, close off where the plovers are, you know where their nests are, and we'll use the rest of the beach. No problem. I have full support of that. The issue becomes the wandering plover now clouds the issue. I don't so think no longer has anything to do with this. It's the plover ordinance, sir. No, it is the plover ordinance, but it, but the, it does... The amendment is to add kite surfing and parasailing. I'm, I, I'm getting to that. If you, that this is all it. part of it. Well, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, okay. I'm speaking to the ordinance. Is, is that, if that's not proper, then I'm out of order and you can call me and I'll sit down. Yeah. The, he's speaking to the whole, whole ordinance. Correct? Correctly. Right. Yes. Is that improper? No, I... Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't find it improper, okay. um, Tom. I, I, <clears throat> okay, continue. So, so again, uh, uh, going back to that, the the idea of separating uh, an area to protect the plover, whether it be from kites, uh, kite surfing, or dogs, uh, makes sense. But you have to have a, a clearly defined area that can't be uh, redefined at somebody's whim. And I think that's where you're seeing the most uh, struggle from the public to understand that and to accept that. So as far as a, a plover ordinance to protect the plovers, uh, there would be support to have a protected area, but as long as that protected area can't be the entire beach at the discretion of one person or a special interest group. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that if I'm, if I'm not speaking to the ordinance re with regard to the plovers, uh, I'm not sure what I'm, what we're here talking about because that's that's kind of the ordinance, is it not? Yeah, it, yeah, you're you're all set. Okay. 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 Very Thank good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This time I'm going to say what my sister usually says, and that is, I was the one that adopted this plover ordinance, and I do care about the birds and. I think it's great that you're extending the um, footage up to 200 feet. That was one of the amendments, I think, right? From 100 to 200, right? That's one of the amendments. 150 to 200. Okay, so I'm asking this because I'm pretty sure that's what one of the amendments was. But it looks like 
some people don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> I do support that. In fact, we supported 250 years ago about it. The problem is, if you're not going to enforce that, you're going to have people with their animals, dogs, kids, our animals too, <laughs> violating that 200 foot. So it comes back to enforcement again. So we are back in enforcement and education again. Same thing with kites um, and the 200 foot um, amendment. So I just want you to understand that this is, you know, going nowhere if there, if it can't be enforced. And the um, the officer that went to the ad hoc committee said it can't be enforced. That's what I heard him say. It's the old ordinance. So now we're in more restrictions that can't be enforced. And this is the first step towards people off the beaches, and this is a very, very slippery slope. Um, I support the distance from the birds, and I do support, I even could support the protection areas if it's, but when it's come to, and the, the additional additions and restrictions on kites, I even support. But it, again, it goes to that whim of where the bird moves that's just way overboard. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone else? Okay, close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Anything down there? I think the only... Oh, oh, oh. Jim, Jim. Um, <coughs> I think the prior speaker makes a very plausible argument. I was under the impression that we were fencing this off. Only I was told, no, we were not. It was only going to be signage. We're not going to be doing signage. You're not going to have people with 200 and 100 foot measure, tape measures, seeing where they can go, where they can't go. You can have the signage all you want, but if you don't literally have a mark in the sand, and as far as I'm concerned, it should be fenced off, snow fence. I know there could be a problem that would, with the uh, high tide, but there's got to be something that is commonly understood. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. The one, the area that I saw um, was fenced off with a nestar, and there were signs. Oh, at that 150-foot mark telling people that there was a nesting area there. Is that, is that the way they've been marked? That's the way it's been done historically, right. that the, there's not a fence line at that 200, 150, you know, what we're considering is 200-foot mark, but it, there's, but a, the sign. there's a fence of sorts, um, and sometimes it's stick and twine. It's not really a, right. a conventional fence immediately in the nest location, and then there are uh, often signs at that periphery, at the perimeter. So the risk is going to be fencing. It's fencing around, around the nest, well, nesting uh, area. Then fencing is a is, you know, conjures up different images. They call it stake and twine. It's often it's it's a kind of a ceremonial fence, if you will, but it's not a snow fence or chain link or anything of the sort. It's some sort of indication that there's a nest at that location, and they themselves, the, mm. the state and federal agencies, refer to refer to it as stake and twine. That's the way it's been done historically. I suspect that's the way it'll be managed in the future. Okay. On any given day, somebody with a knife or a scissors. Yep. No. That's a yep. limitation that's been there, and, and perhaps it, get, it will exist. Okay, Councilor Donovan. The, uh, the change from 150 feet to 200 feet, that's already in... Uh, one of the prior ordinances that's in the animal control ordinance, not in the plover ordinance. So we're a little bit off topic, but it doesn't bother me to talk about it. I think uh, uh, the town manager is correct 
that it's very, very, it's about as lightweight a fence scheme as you could imagine, because it really is just twine strung between uh, what looked like uh, the kind of posts you'd put in your corner of your yard to let the guy plowing your, your the snow know he shouldn't shouldn't go beyond this point. It's that level of. Uh, uh, I'm, n I'm, I'm not familiar with the signage, but that's it. The only thing that got changed here was, uh, again, uh, universally agreed to by the uh, ad hoc committee, was to get our, our nomenclature correct, we were calling something kite flying when it was actually called kite surfing. Uh, and so we were just, that, that's the only reason that these amendments are. So they're, they're just getting the ordinance so that it's more, it's more correct. Okay, Councilor Holbrook. I don't really have any, I just was remembering something from the first go around with us in front of us as a council. Um, <laughs> I beg you guys to take kite flying out of it. I said, really, little kids with their kites? You can't be messing with it too much, but um, <clears throat> That was just a thought that passed my mind. <laughs> Councilor Katarina. No, I'm, I'm good. Really? Yeah, I can Okay. Councilor Blaze. I'm all set with it. You're all set? I guess it's okay. Moving it forward. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Okay. That's done. Chairman, by the clock on the wall, it's 10, and according yep. to our rules, uh, no new business shall be taken up after 10 o'clock unless there's a suspend, uh, suspend the rules to, um, we're gonna to continue. Do I have a motion to suspend the rules and continue? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next. You're welcome. Order number 1438 is act on the request of the Vacation Land Dog Club, Inc. and New York County Kennel Club for a mass gathering permit for their AKC sanctioned dog show, the Southern Maine Coastal Classic, located at Wisconsin <coughs> Springs Campground. And their events are uh, May 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. So moved. Second. Any discussion? It's not on a beach, is it? No, it's uh, Wisconsin Springs. It's uh, it's quite an activity. It's a nice show. Um, it brings a lot of uh, commerce to the community. Um, I couldn't can't say enough good things about it. It's uh, well put together, well organized, uh, outstanding. So I highly uh, endorse it. Jim. I also <coughs> endorse it. I live within walking distance of where they have the show. And on that given day, I wouldn't know if they had it or not. There is no problems in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. including traffic. So I'm all in favor of it. What's the, what's the date of the, the show? It's goes from May 15th through mm -hmm. to the 18th. 15th through the 18th of May? Mm -hmm. Okay, no more comments, questions? All those in favor? Opposed? None. Order number 1439 <coughs> is act on the request to renew the town manager's contract. I'm going to make a motion to table to our May 21st meet meeting to allow for um, some follow-up discussion on this matter. Second. Okay, any discussion on that? Nope. No discussion. Nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's getting late. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Non action items? No. None. Uh, standing and special committee reports. We'll start with Councilor Blaze, Councilor Benedict. I have nothing. One of, uh, Coastal Waters will not have meetings in the summer. Uh, the next meeting is the 19th of September. And that's all I have for that. Okay, Councilor Katarina. Um, 
Long-term planning will be meeting this Friday at 8 a.m. That's it. Council Donovan. <laughs> the Energy Committee met and we had a demonstration of a pressure test uh, typical of what is done if you have an energy audit uh, to educate the Energy Committee on, on how that's done and uh, some of the niceties of that. So it was kind of interesting. And uh, the Finance Committee also met and I'll let the Chairman uh, speak to make any comments on that. Councilor Holbrook. Um, Housing Alliance will be meeting Thursday, April 17th at 6.30, um, which will be the third Thursday of the month. Um, this upcoming meeting, they'll have um, an election of chair as well as a goal setting for this upcoming year of tasks that they would like to achieve. Um, and at their last meeting, there was an update to the Griffin Road um, it was a, the Rosbera project, mm -hmm. um, which has taken a little bit of a shift um, that's going, instead of being um, a series of three buildings um, that were apartment housing, um, this is going to be a single building with a senior, uh, senior one-bedroom apartment setting. Um, so they are kicking around um, ways of being able to make that, you know, come together. Um, there should be some, there was some discussion about, um, you know, possibility <coughs> of the TIFs. Those things might be coming to you later for discussion. Um, but again, like I said, it was a shift into a single building, one bedroom units for 55 and plus, uh, 55 plus. Um, and then there was some discussion, um, just an update on the Habitat project on Broad Turn Road. Um, Habitat has secured their um, financing, per, so they are getting ready to move to those next stages, and I believe they have um, the well, they have a plan for um, site approval with the yeah, planning board. Sketch plan. Sketch plan, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, so more to come on that. Historic <coughs> preservation um, has continued um, some discussions. They met last night. They have continued some discussions on um, sites and properties and, you know, who makes the list and stuff. <laughs> who does it and why and what was significant about it. Um, so continuing to work on um, methods of outreach and to gather some um, public feedback um, and, and, you know, the best way to go about that. Um, we're currently work they're currently working on a draft letter to go to the members that are on the list, mm -hmm. uh, or the sites, of the owners, I'm sorry, of the folks that are on the list um, to have a informational meeting to try to get folks in to give us feedback, input, ideas that they might have for incentives to try to keep historic, you know, um, historic sites that they own um, and what might be a bonus to them <coughs> to be able to do that. Appointments committee will um, <laughs> need to meet a lot, but um, we'll need to meet prior to the next council meeting if we can for briefly for um, at 6.30. There's a couple of appointments, um, uh, applications that have come through for some couple of committees. Um, and just again to remind folks at home that there are several vacancies and soon to be upcoming committees as well. So if you're interested, please do um, stop at the clerk's office or you can jump online and fill out an application. Um, Historic Preservation still has openings, um, Housing Alliance has openings, cable television. Um, I, I think there's a good chunk of it. The, the list is, I think almost all our committees have a vacancy. So if you're interested in serving or have something to offer you know, um, that you think you might offer, um, please do let us know. Uh, finance met yesterday morning, and that was with... Um, we met with public safety, which was our police, fire, and rescue, planning, and assessing. Um, public safety, as, as you know, um, in recent years, for the last five years, we, we really haven't done our staffing plans, and we've also held the line in spending. So they did come forward with um, a slight increase on the public safety side. There are the police positions and the fire positions, so there was a slight increase there. Um, again, that'll get worked through as, as the process goes forward. Um, um, planning comes in flat um, as well as assessing um, with no increase, so good news there. Um, two interesting tidbits, one out of planning. Um, the one purchase that they have in their CIP is a new 
smart car, more or less. It's an energy car. There is no gas. It, you plug it in and charges up, and it's kind of an interesting, um, I can't think of the name of it now. Sorry, Leaf. Something no, Leaf. 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 Um, which will work well with our new Trigen. They're expecting to be able to work it off of that. And assessing does have one slight hiccup. Um, again, their their budget line itself is flat, but the um, in order to do our council goal, the town wide reevaluation does trigger that next step because it is over four hundred thousand, so it will need to be a voter referendum question. Um, so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And the next meeting for finance committee will be April um, Tuesday, April eighth at nine a.m. The next. Um, group that we'll be dealing with will be Public Works, <coughs> Library, SEDCO, and Administration. Thank you, Council Holbrook. Um, I, I have nothing on uh, to report on committees. Um, they haven't, I don't know, may, transportation may have met. Uh, I don't think. I've forgotten what they're, what they're working on. I think they're looking at new initiatives at this point, uh, ideas for right. next, next things. To it's like up. they keep scheduling it when I have to work. So. Um, Manager's report. In the interest of time, I'll abbreviate things, but I did want to speak to the dredge project. Uh, the dredge project, the permit for that project expired at the end of March, so that project is now done. Some of the activity described uh, to you this evening from the podium uh, must be related to kind of the cleanup. Um, there's maybe still some um, shaping of the contours of the beach uh, and cleaning up some of the related equipment. But the dredging activity has ceased, and that's a function of the permit. Uh, unfortunately, the contractor selected uh, has fallen way short of what the expected goal was. The expectation was about 125,000 cubic yards of material to be moved. Uh, because quantities will be based on actual surveys, I, I can't speak with great certainty, but I think just a, I can safely say just a fraction of that material was moved you know, during the course of this dredge window. I have been given assurances by Army Corps that the money allotted at this project will stay with it uh, and that uh, they will endeavor to get someone back here, whether it's the same contract or another. Frankly, I hope it's a different one. Um, the next time that the permit allows for work to, to resume, and that would be November uh, this fall. So I'll do my part. Um, I'm kind of on the outside looking in. We're not actively involved in the process uh, to assure that uh, to happen. but. I was comforted that uh, the money is ear earmarked for us and they will work on our behalf to get a contractor of some sort back as soon as, um, as possible. Um, the other piece of information, uh, as part of the project the Council funded last year for pedestrian safety improvements along Eastern Trail, this is at Black Point Road and Pine Point Road, uh, all the work was done last fall but for uh, erecting the actual um, warning flashers. Those have been installed at least at Pine Point and the others at Black Point are, are forthcoming this week, today. I believe. Today. Are they in today? They were, no, they're not in, but they were working on it. Uh, and uh, those, those <coughs> signals will be operational almost immediately. Uh, there's no kind of wait time. I, I think it's, uh, we're hitting it perfectly that there's not heavy use yet on the trail, yet there'll be some. And so motorists, mm -hmm. I hope, will get acclimated to the fact that there's a new signal that they need to pay attention to. These are designed to be uh, very much uh, noticeable, um, obviously, and so I don't think it would take long for motorists to appreciate that there's a new, something new in the environment, and um, I certainly expect that when activated, motorists will certainly see them and uh, act accordingly. And two last things, the solar project is well underway, certainly by the end of the month. I expect both those systems to be fully operational. And I'm still working through some of the contract language. In fact, they're having some difficulty on the Trigen project. Uh, there's also some price escalation that I'm working through. And I'm hopeful to <coughs> keep that project moving forward on task and on budget. Uh, should I not be able to, I think we'll need to consider our options. So I will certainly keep you apprised of that. It's an important project for the town. Um, and I'll do my best to work through those issues that remain. Thank you. Councilor Comments. <coughs> that with uh, Councilor Blaze. I'll pass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Benedict. Okay. <laughs> How about Councilor Holbrook? Um, I try to keep it short. Um, I did want to just mention um, again that the 
town continues to work with the Project Grace for the this uh yeah, sorry, it's late. <laughs> yep. I just keep getting more and more tongue tied. Um for the fuel assistance program. Um I'm happy to say I have ten bags, although not all ten were turned in. I'm still sitting on four, but I got ten bags. It would have been fifteen had my husband remembered to put stickers on five of them. <laughs> um so charity of the month gets a little bonus. Um but so I hit my 15, so I'm going to keep going. So I want to hear great things out of the rest of you that you've hit your 15 bags to turn in. Um, and if anybody's interested, there are clink bags right here in the clerk's office that you can pick up. Um, and I do just fill a bag, kick it off at clink, and it goes into the town fuel systems program with Project Grace. Um, and I'm going to do this really quick. Um, again, um, first of the month, we always try to do... Um, our council of condolences to, to family and friends. Three meetings worth. Three meetings worth. <laughs> Maybe I don't have three meetings worth. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, we'd like to send some condolences. Um, Charles Bernie Baird, um, to the families of um, William Belfant, Beatrice Duloc, um, Maynard Jen. Lee, Leland Hansen Jr., um, Richard Hawks, and Francis Cooler, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then there, um, and Catherine, who, and I, un, I won't pronounce this right, so I apologize now, but um, under, under, thank you. Um, and then, of course, there is, um, if you haven't heard, um, Frederick Cunnewall Sr. has passed away. Um, he was certainly a lifetime resident, Scarborough grad, um, ran a small, he was a small business owner here in town. Um, he ran Honeywell Transport uh, for 22 mm -hmm. years, um, as well as um, Rocco Rosvera Jr. passed mm -hmm. away. Um, again, another life, long time resident. Um, he was the founder of R Rosvera Brothers Construction. You know, there were a lot of Rosvera homes in, <laughs> in Scarborough. Um, and something I did not know, he was a founding member of St. Maximilian Church, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't know until then, um, as well as um, Giovanni Profeno, who also passed away. Um, he uh, was a resident of the Veterans Home. Um, <coughs> he served for the United States Navy for, during World War II, and from there he went and worked for the Portsmouth Shipyard, where he retired from. Um, so, and that's, that's it. Hey, Councilor Donovan. Well, it's uh, April 2nd. I wore my Red Sox <laughs> tie tonight in honor of the Sox uh, opening game. They lost yesterday, but uh, or the day before yesterday. They won tonight, 6-2, to two, big poppy homered. So I think we're off to a good start. So go Sox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Councilor Katarina. Um, Councilor Holbrook. Uh, people, when they see me coming, they're now running because I've been giving out so many claims. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a quick plug for Scarborough Engine 5 Fire. Um, it's having a roast beef dinner at the Lions Club this Saturday, 4.30 to, I think it's 6. could be 6.30. Stop by. Uh, very good roast beef dinner and pie and... Lots of fun, mm -hmm. and uh, they they're putting me to work serving dinner. So, <coughs> come on over. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess the the one of the things that I was going to ask you is uh, an update of the cable boxes. Um, the Scott the um, Scabber three channel. Uh, were those still um, available? For free, or no? As I recall, I'll check back into it. Yeah. Uh, Time Warner Cable um, had a program that expired sometime late last year, whereby you could get a converter. This is the analog uh, converter, television correct. being able to receive mm. the digital si signal. It was a program that they extended into late last year. Um, my recollection is that it's since expired, but I, I I'll check in if you have a, a resident. Yeah, who there's needs still residents asking me about it because they're not getting the channel, and I. We've done it twice. Certainly, twice, certainly you can obtain them, but I think there's now a cost. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, 
but nonetheless, I, I'm certainly pleased to speak to them on behalf of a resident if, if that would be helpful. So have yeah. them on. Um, and the only other thing that I've uh, been hearing about is the uh, dredge uh -huh. That's why, and um, why they're not already out. Um, and I think the whole process started with questions with the Army Corps of Engineers questioning the contractor. So if they had a fall their gut instinct, um, we probably wouldn't have been in this position. So. And then not being able to finish the dredge. Um, I meant the weather was mm -hmm. a factor. Um, but there's other dredges that went on at the same time that were successful. So, um, and I just want folks to know that it, you know, had this was out of our hands, and uh, it's still going to have to be dealt with next year now. Uh, and uh, you know, um, I think uh, most of the comments that I had, I used during the uh, discussions on the uh, ordinances and the uh, uh, resolutions. So um, as far as any other comments to do with those, I'll save to a later date. Um, I think we've got some uh, things to discuss that were brought up by the public, um, which will be discussed. And um, we'll try to come back with um, maybe something a little better. Um, I don't know whether it will be acceptable to all, um, but we'll try. And with that, I'll call for adjournment. To move. Second. All those in favor? Hey.